get my dues. Respect, I'm the next tycoon. Got a path full of greens, couple M's, my soul. Number leave a deal, see the confidence. Got some people waiting for me on the fence. Had a favor, never see me on the fence. But to leave it when I win, it's coming soon. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to the start of Season 2 of Emerald Draft League. My name is Eptop the Unicorn. Joining me is the one true ducky and the new draft commissioner himself, Giggle Queef. How are you guys doing today? Living the dream, man. Living the dream. <laughs> Giggle Queef stole the words right out of my mouth. I am also living a great dream tonight. All right. Well, let's kick this off real quick because I know Giggle, you got to uh, you know get back to your uh, your captain duties here. But wanted to have you on here to do a quick rundown of kind of your experience with running draft leagues, and then also kind of talk about this new format that we've implemented since it's uh, quite a bit different than our original season one of Emerald League. Uh, sure. So I started over in. Victorious. The past couple seasons, I was just a player, and then I took on a staff role, and I had a big hand in running their draft leagues, um, and then had a couple kind of unique ideas I wanted to bring over, and uh, that's where I approached Emerald and asked them if they'd be interested in some of my ideas, and uh, that's why I'm here now. So we changed the point system from uh, season one and we're working on a uh, best of two format but if you're tied you're gonna go to uh, uh, blind pick game three to decide the winner of the series so I think it's gonna be pretty interesting to see uh, what happens when uh, nobody can ban your champs out anymore if you go to that game three that's a very interesting twist to a best of uh, three series. Uh, what made you think more about the blind pick? Was it just so that people couldn't be banned out, or are there more strategies that you think might be employed? Uh, I think uh, from doing Victorious, I think you kind of get a lot of signups from players who are known as the quote unquote one trick ponies. And there are always players that have a really tough time in the league. Um, because people know they're one trick and they're just going to get banned. So I think, I think if you can't, you know, beat them out in two games, I think it's a cool idea to say, Hey, you know, this format's going to let you at least get a chance to play your, your champ at least once in the season, you know? So I think that'll help out the one tricks. And I think it kind of brings back that old LCK format in the day that people seem to like. Very interesting. How do you think that, you know, that boost to one tricks and their value overall as a player within this league will affect the draft tonight? Or not tonight, but the draft later. Uh, well, I think it definitely bumps a player's stock. Um, I'm not sure how much because at the end of the day, a team has to get to that third game to let that one trick through. Um, so I think it definitely adds some value, but at the same time, like I said, you have to at least get to that third game. So you're going to have to be able to play a couple different champions if you want to succeed. Very true. Broadening the champion pool is something that I've observed a lot of players do during their time playing different competitive leagues. Um, do you have any one tricks in mind that might benefit from this change that are participating in this league or perhaps in the past that you could think of? Uh, I'm not... I'm not going to go ahead and give anyone secrets out. I'm going to let the captains and their teams that they pick uh, scout everybody out. I don't want to give any spoilers on who uh, may or may not be the one tricks. All right. Fair enough. Well, 
All right, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us tonight. Um, you've gone over some of the changes. Uh, are there any more changes to the format or league in general that you've brought on? Uh, not particularly. I, I would like to add uh, a thing of a topic of confusion that we're going to do like like I've kind of gone over already. There's no bans for that blind pick game for game three so we're doing no bans at all so. hey well i'm sure many are thankful for having that clarified is there any other remarks you'd like to make before we take us sales to intermission uh i don't think so i hope just everyone enjoys the changes and uh has a great season all right well thank you very much i'm hoping very much for the same thing uh thank you guys for watching and we will see you in a minute yep thank you
Welcome back, everybody. We are just entering our first champ select of the night between the blue and the red team. Lots of competitors here tonight. Exactly 10, just like normal. But you don't know these guys' names, thanks to Riot's latest update, where champ select is anonymous. So I will yeah. correct that problem for you. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely the uh, Riot's thing, and definitely nothing to do with our end. Yeah, it's definitely not our problem. There's so, nothing, not, yeah, it's, this is just Riot. They're, they're screwing with us. On the blue team, in the top lane, <laughs> you'll have African Rhino. In the jungle, you'll have Keeb Cat. In the mid lane, you'll have Alolan Zorua. On the bot lane, you'll have Arctic Cyanide, and his support will be Moopat. And if I butchered your name, I do not care. On the red team, you'll have in the top lane, Def Coin Flip. In the jungle, Phoenix. In the mid lane, Icy Rain. In the bot lane, Freya. And his support will be Nisashi. Now, Ryan, what do you know about these players based on last season? Uh, well, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, two, three. Three of these players are played in last season. Um, although, we, we know a little bit about Def Coin Flip, but not from uh, last season. <laughs> Um, but, you know, Nisashi being, a, as Sigma would call him, perpetually the third best support. Uh, no matter what he did, he couldn't, uh, you know, shake that. So we'll see if maybe season two he can get a little bit of a fresh start. Um, but uh, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, was... I guess you probably can't tell me. I think Arctic and Nisashi... Am I remembering that they played together, or did Arctic play with Neos? I don't remember. No so, idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they are playing, they do play together in a, another league. I just can't remember if they played together in Season 1. But either way, we're actually getting into some some picks here. So, it's uh, a, Ezreal and Caitlyn Nami are yeah, locking in the bot lane. Not necessarily what I was expecting to see early, but... Yeah, I'm also, you know, slightly confused. It's very interesting choices. Um, I'm not exactly caught up to date with the meta of the most recent patch, but from what I understand, Ezreal has not been a very priority pick in the past few patches, has he? I don't believe so. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what, you know, they pull out. I know it is something that I've seen Arctic play in the past, so... Maybe just the, you know starting the starting their first game of exhibitions on some comfort never a, never a bad strategy to trying to put your best foot forward here to you know increase your position in the draft. Yeah, that is very true. Some people decide when they get into a competitive league to chase and play you know only the meta champions, but I think especially for a, for this league in particular, um, it might be better for a lot of players to just go with what they know and pick comfort. Uh, especially in the beginning of the season where the meta could change extremely rapidly. Yeah. Now, one thing we are seeing here that is very meta, although I feel like the, the meta of it is rather solo queue inducive, so we'll see. But AP Malka Jungle is a very strong pick right now in solo queue. I think it has something like a 55% win rate. Um, oh, so. my God. We'll see if they end up going with the AP version or the more traditional tank version that we typically see in competitive play. <clears throat> so that is supposed to be an Aatrox ban from the red team that we do not see right now. So a lot of top laners coming out. Neither team has picked their top lane yet, but you'll notice a lot more pressure has been placed from the red side, probably trying to make up for the fact that their top laner is a slightly lower rank than the top laner of the other team. Uh, maybe some importance placed in that position for this game? Do you think we might see some jungle activity up there? Uh, we definitely could. Um, I don't know what a lot of these players um, are playing, but uh, we'll see if the, the Team 3 is uh, crazy enough and um, Dev Coin Flip, because I know he plays Kane. We'll see if he decides he wants to play the Kane top lane and really, uh, you know, throw a curveball here. <laughs> That would be up, a but... curveball indeed to the enemy team, most likely to his own team, and definitely to us. And 
Yeah. You know, I know he, I've only seen him play Kane in the jungle, but you know, anything. I also don't see him play top a lot, so we'll, we'll have to manage expectations here. Well, a bot lane ban in Seraphine, more of a support ban than a bot lane ban, but uh, very interesting. They've banned two supports as well as three top laners. So you kind of see a very clear focus on two players, on two of the higher ranked players from the blue team. So yeah. perhaps a good amount of strategy. The uh, bans on the blue team seem to be more oriented on the jungle and top lane positions. Also okay. picking on a higher rank, but not the highest rank. And then picking on the lowest rank. So a little bit of difference in their strategy on who they target in these bands. Um, but All we'll right, see which I, one pays I off. Do you like the strategy here? Just putting Def Coin Flip on, you know, a kind of stable top laner who, even if you fall behind, if you're able to find that one R in the team fight with Malphite, uh, you can still be useful no matter how fast you die afterwards. Um, the only issue is it's up against uh, Ezreal as the only carry you've seen so far when you lock that in, so it might be a little difficult to find those angles. But the Anivia coming in, that's a... Um, if it doesn't have Flash, very easy... <laughs> all yeah, to that is on, so. an easy angle indeed, and a very dangerous one, because Kane is very good at diving the back line. He's just, unless he goes red form, not very good at keeping them still. But, you know, even just an opening second from Malphite is all the time that a blue cane would need to be able to destroy them. Not expecting to see the blue cane with the bulk of the blue team, but it's still a very good opening for those diving champions. And you see that Ooh. they're going to pair it very nicely with the Yasuo. So a large amount of their team comp just wants to go in a very simple go button. And historically, if you don't fact check me, this league has seen <laughs> a lot of success from simple go buttons. Yeah, that's definitely all from season one. We saw a much higher success from everything that could just go in unless the enemy team had Seraphine. And in which case, it didn't go so well. Seraphine so they banned did. Seraphine, thinking ahead. And um, they're just looking to go all in. And I think that this probably leads a bit more credence to being Red Kane. Um, try and help out get into the back line and also provide an extra knockout for the Yasuo. Yeah, being a and, beefier member to allow the other people to build, you know, mostly damage, also a yeah. good strategy. And I think Team 2 might have a bit of trouble actually team fighting, especially if the Maokai does the solo queue build of the full AP rather than the typical tank. Because Camille really doesn't want to be the tankiest person on her team. Yeah. So, to speak to the strength of the blue team, though, if the red team isn't far enough ahead to tower dive them, they will find it a little difficult to siege against Anivia, Ezreal with all the poke coming out. Karma offers a good amount of poke as well. Maokai with his brush control can give a lot of vision around turrets that's necessary to help prevent a dive. So, there's still a lot of strengths coming out of the blue team. Yep, and we will have to see. They do, Team 2, the, even speaking to that, the, between Karma, Ezreal, uh, Maokai can provide a lot of peel. They have a lot of ways to disengage from the fight. And if the Malphite can't find a good knockup on multiple people or gets flashed or dodged by this the Ezreal shift, it could be difficult for them to just, just follow up with how much disengage they have because Nami is not really offering any engage. So I think it's really going to come down to how far ahead the Caitlyn is, like you said, and being able to actually siege turrets, because Caitlyn's the only person who's actually going to, you know, have range to do anything in some sort of siege without a tower dive. So we'll have to see. Maybe we get some more focus on this bot lane early on. Try to get the Caitlyn ahead and, you know, let Caitlyn do what she does best at just demolishing towers early game. Yeah, and very importantly for the blue team, trying to put the Caitlyn behind. You know, if the red team doesn't have that turret killer, then the game is going to be very, very slow. And I'm afraid that looking at the late game Anivia, uh, Yasuo eats one stun and or Kane eats one stun while he's, you know, sitting in a wall looking for the go ahead and it's all over for him. All right. I'm trying to think, you know, there's not not too much else to uh, to look at here. We thing is that it's you know, first time these people are playing together, it's not actually the team that they're going to be playing with this season. 
Um, so I think just, just looking at an individual, I think a, lo a lot of it you just want to see is not necessarily perfect coordination, but, you know, some, some basic team play and, uh, you know, map movements, as well yeah. as obviously they want to showcase their individual skill. But, you know, if you're individual skilling, you know, all by yourself on the, <laughs> the sideline as your team loses, uh, you might, uh, might not impress too many captains with that. So we'll see how well these people can coordinate together and more closely, kind of more closely related to a solo queue environment than a competitive team environment, having never really played with yeah. each, all of each other before. Very true. It is an important thing to demonstrate, you know, um, you have individual talent, but you can't fall into the trap of allowing your individual talent to cause you to play your champion in a way that you don't fulfill the role that the team composition needs. So Ezreal could make very aggressive, insane skill shot hitting plays, but if he's not being what his team needs in that moment, then he's not really, you know, playing well. And that is something that you have to demonstrate that's different from a solo queue environment to a competitive environment. And we kind of want to see more of a competitive environment, but we'll probably get solo queue, so. <laughs> hey, I just want to see, you know, some good League of Legends that may or may not involve some fiestas. Very true. And with that, <laughs> I think it best to wait out the rest of our three-minute delay in uh, intermission, does it not? Uh, yep, that sounds good. We will uh, be back shortly as we let the stream delay catch up.
and welcome back. We are coming into the first game to see four blue team members chasing down that Caitlyn, taking what we said to heart, trying to ruin her game before it even begins, but nothing much going to come of it. Uh, just going to be get, doing some shenanigans early game. Oh, Nisashi, you got to be a little bit careful. Recognizes it and walks away, but looking at the, uh, the Keystone choices, it, it looks like it is going to be the tank Maokai instead of the AP. The AP Maokai runs Phase Rush, and we have Aftershock here, so... Looks to be, you know, a bit a bit more typical of a Maokai player. You know, very true. But his team, you know, does have a lot of damage already and really needs that tanky member, so I support the decision. Yeah, especially since he can just focus on building full armor. We didn't really talk about it, but besides Maokai, there is no source of... Ma or besides Malphite, there is no source of magic damage on the other team. Well, oh, let's uh, not underestimate Nami's bubbles, all right? But all you right. are correct. Uh, might be Nami built a death cap we'll armor talk. stacking. <laughs> <laughs> Nami building a death cap this game would be something that I would wholeheartedly support only in my mind. Or only in my heart, not in my mind. We'll flip that around. <laughs> all right, well, in, I don't see anything else, you know, out of the ordinary here. Yeah, very yeah, I guess there, there is a little bit of... Um, Decision on the the Ezreal. I see some Ezreals go first strike, some do press the attack. I've even seen some fleet footworks and some like Draven lanes and stuff, but so you just see yeah. you know pretty standard rune setup for Ezreal. He's typically one of the AD car one of the only AD carries who can actually utilize multiple different runes, so most AD carries are locked into that lethal tempo, which is a very standard rune for the Caitlyn pick. Um not good on Ezreal with his cast. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, a flash play coming in from Maokai, taking two tower shots, three tower shots, dies for absolutely no reason, and Ibia not going to be very happy with that, but Maokai trying to get the budget in sec, you know, a very basic plan, but now Kane looking for the retribution, saying your jungler came mid, it's about time I came mid as well. Egg passive going to be popped, cracked, and made into an omelet. For one of their members, it was the Kane, yeah. Sorry, I almost messed that up. <laughs> oh, not the the start that blue team was looking for here is Yasuo starting off with some early kills and assists to Malkai not recognizing turret range, just barely inside of that range and Oh, Mike what a kill here coming top. out from the Camille. She gets the shield, Malfi tries to retaliate but cannot do enough damage and he falls. A lot of fighting going on this early game. Summoners are blown balling as they fight. Oh, everyone's low. Oh, but the jungle in the mid from top to punish her for trying to shove the wave in. Actually huge for Malphite to not miss that wave. That was a lot of creeps, a lot of experience. He could not afford to miss that. Great play by the other top, top side members of the red team to cover him there. Man. These teams came in here knowing it was the first stream game. They didn't want, you know, a little boring snooze fest here for the first 15 minutes. <laughs> Trying to get kills everywhere already. And like you mentioned, I think if uh, Camille could have got that reset, you know, Maokai did still have TP, but that was going to be a, you know, pretty big loss in terms of XP and gold. But now yeah. he's, you know, down to the kill, but at least, you know, he's pretty sitting pretty comfortable in the lane stage. Uh, he won't have as much gold power in his inventory as Camille has. Oh, and a fight starts mid lane. With the red buff, Yasuo is very hard to get away from, but a good wall from Anivia will save the last 40% of her health bar, but with the wave shoving out and her needing to approach, this might be a difficult situation for her. Yeah, I mean, here, if I'm the mid laner, I am telling my Maokai, I know you grieved me last time you came here, but you need to get your ass back here right now and fix this wave. Very <laughs> true. Not Yasuo, looking great. Looking to pressure the situation, blows the flash of the Anivia, holds the Q, but is not able to make it connect afterwards. You know, without a passive, Anivia is quite vulnerable in this lane. Yeah, already down to half mana too, so half mana, half health. This is kind of the point where you, you kind of have to accept your losses and just reset on this terrible timer. Especially with no flash here, you're going to get engaged on it. You might just go down. Two fights brewing. One in the mid lane and one in the bot lane. The one in the bot lane fizzles out, and since the camera hasn't shifted back, we can only assume mid lane played the same. Yeah, A little but... bit of trading going on top lane. Very standard lanes. You know, besides the early game play, the game has calmed down a little bit. We do see red team moving towards the dragon, uh, which is an interesting call, but... 
These trades are getting close. We might see some action come out after this dragon take. Looks like we might get some fighting here as blue team's bot lane is moving up as Maokai's on the way, but he's doing his Krux instead, so... Yeah, just gonna let this go. Just not there. Red team looking to turn the dragon take into some kills. Kane ignoring the walls that Riot put in the game in the first place, but almost overestimating his own capabilities. Has to burn the flash to get away from the Ezreal. Uh, you know, when you can... When you play a very mobile champion, uh, you have to keep an eye on where the rest of your teammates are at because uh, you might be able to run through two walls and attack. Oh, and Malphite is able to go in. Two fights brewing once more. Have no idea what to commentate as the fight fizzles out top lane and nothing comes of the fight bot side either. Just enough to interrupt my train of thought, but not enough to give us any true action. And then, I mean, Malphite just really needed to get that wave to crash. He's able to shove this wave in and get the TP out of, can force her to TP out because that's a wave crashing in. So at least we'll equalize this TP advantage and actually gets a pretty good back off here, getting all the way up to 40 CS before his next back. So yeah, kind very of importantly, equals uh, out that early deficit he faced by uh, going down to that kill. Very true. Uh, you'll notice that, you know, if you total up the items in Camille's inventory, you've got 1,050 gold. Whereas for Maokai, you've got 1,400 gold spent on this recall. So we might actually see, depending on how you know effectively they're able to use that gold in their inventory, we might see Maokai or Malphite pull ahead in this lane. Yeah, hopefully Maokai's not pulling ahead in any lane here, but... <laughs> well, you never know. He could oh. show up in any lane to interrupt their play. <laughs> You know, I heard recently that um, one thing you can do to make a jungler extremely upset is take their camps. Oh, but True. a fight's brewing out to interrupt my train of thought once more. <laughs> ah, they're Malphite fine. Malphite and Camille. Camille pops the ultimate, has a one-level lead. Looks like a dangerous situation for the Malphite as the Q almost drops him. He's got just over 100 hit points, and he runs away. Camille, waiting for the hookshot cooldown, knows it's going to be up soon. Looking for the kill. She hits the hookshot and secures 274 gold for herself. Uh, bit unfortunate there by Malphite. His flash was almost up there. If he would have... Had a couple more seconds before that cooldown came in, he could have at least traded his flash for it, but it's like oh. bad things happen in mid. Yes, a mid lane fight brewing out another clutch Anivia wall just to save her life, but Anivia's already down 16 creeps in this matchup, and that's not where you want to be on an Anivia. Yeah, you know, we all, everyone always talks about how easy it is for Anivia to, to wave clear once she gets a couple items and levels, but... These early levels, it can be pretty pretty brutal to try and maintain some sort of wave control, especially against Yasuo, who just kind of, it's not very uh, easy to tell where you're safe because he can always just start dashing through your own minions to secure Speaking of not fight. being safe, Maokai in his own jungle, getting chased down by the cane and the Yasuo. They decide to leave it, knowing they might not have the damage to finish off such a tanky character so early. And, you know, if we take a look down here toward this bot lane, red team is constantly having pressure. They're about to get this first turret plate as well, but Ezreal's doing a pretty good job here staying even, but that bubble lands it. Oh, oh the please. shield from Karma saves his life. If not saved, then saves all but a few of his hit points from him. Yeah, but, you know, this is just kind of what you want to see from Caitlyn, especially with this Nami to backing her up. It's not the typical pairing we see with Caitlyn, but Nami is a very you know, oppressive laner. It looks like we might be getting another fight here in top lane. Yeah, both junglers pathing towards the top side. They see the ghost from Kane in the wall and decide not to pursue it any further. But with their mid laner here, they could be setting up a dive. We'll see how they treat the wave. Looks like they are just going to back off on the play. Decide it's not worth letting Yasuo get all the free farm. Uh, very solid choice from them. I believe if we can pan back up to this top side, I think that was pushing away from Maokai. From what I saw, yeah, so a little bit of a dangerous position for, for Malphite, rather. He still has his all and flash, so it should oh, be pretty safe. A very close fight that we didn't get to see in the bot lane, but you are correct on that point. Malphite, going to have a difficult time getting away under turret. Camille, doing what she needs to do and punishing him for even walking close. One more engage with Camille's ult up right now could spell the end of Malphite's life for this go-around. Uh, oh, boy, Malchai's back. It's 
him here. Yeah, Maokai yeah. knows it. Camille goes in with the hook shot. Malphite takes the fight, not really to do much else. Tries to ult out, but is stopped by the Camille ultimate. Burning your ultimate there on the Malphite. Not what you want to see. Was a desperate attempt, just did not have the timing. Yeah, a bit, bit unlucky there. At least he didn't burn his flash as well. You know, silver That is lining. very true. Yeah, you see some players try to burn their flash in a panic to get out of the Camille ultimate, and... You know, sometimes it almost works, because I forget to press my Camille buttons. I'm just stuck <laughs> shaking my head. Uh, one thing we uh, haven't talked about is some of the item buffs that happened this patch are very favorable for the Zenevia. You can see her building the Rod of Ages here, but never mind as we go in. But Oh, favorable looks... is what you want to see when Yasuo comes to engage. Having your support right there is quite favorable, but Jungle was nearby for the Yasuo, gets the disengage, does not cost him his summoners, and will... Just be, you know, a decent trade for the Anivia. Yeah, but uh, like I was saying, the, the Rod of Ages we see in Anivia building, the, plus the Seraph's Embrace, both got huge buffs this patch. Uh, Seraph's Embrace in particular is back to AP scaling based off mana instead of ability haste based off mana. And it also has flat ability haste on the item now, plus some additional uh, AP to go with it for I think it's like 200 extra gold in cost. But we might have to table that thought. Yeah, an engage coming out, disengage from the Nami, able to peel off the members of the blue team, but they do get the positioning to take the dragon. Kane going to counter, attempting to take the mid turret. Very crucial for the Nivia to hold on to these mid turrets. She can defend them near permanently. So getting a lot of damage down, not quite taking a turret, still worthwhile. You do want to knock them down, and we knew that sieging was going to have to be the game plan of the red team. So getting the damage down is early, but you really do want to see more out of those Rift Heralds. Yeah, I think it was just a, we saw them doing Dragon, we can't contest, let's try and get something mid. Malphite was able to get some plates up in top lane, but now Kane's in a bit of trouble. Oh, the engage comes out from the blue team, and Kane dropped extremely low. Malphite, able to get a little bit of CC on the field, <laughs> has a little bit of time to escape, and is going to use his flash to escape himself. Summoner's blown on both sides. Oh, but Yasuo tries to come in to save the play, gets ulted by Camille, and is not going to be able to take her down. Camille... Takes a second, and Mal Mal Maokai tries to secure the kill. Karma locks up Nami for another secured kill from the blue team onto the Camille. Oh man, that just turned out real poorly here for red team. It looks like they might not be done. Trying to posture for this tower dive. There were no minions yet, but they are coming in here soon. Yeah, and Malphite's that's... gonna be able to walk away. In that situation, it's just not something you want to see from your mid laner. I mean, I'm sure the team comms are saying, hey, we're out, let's go. They burn the summoners, they flash the walls, they disengage from the fight, and then suddenly Yasuo appears. But don't want to rag on one player for too long. So, you know, sometimes you're there, you think you're strong, you know, you're ahead in your lane, you go for the play, and it just doesn't work out for you. We've all been there. Yeah, it's just, just a bit of limit testing here in game one. <laughs> and, that, and I mean, a little bit of limit testing is completely fine to see in an yeah. exhibition match. You know, you're never going to get the hype play if you never go <laughs> for the risky play. Yeah, yeah. He, he found out that Yasuo needs at least one item before he can 1v4. Exactly. <laughs> a, a very strong character released, uh, what was it, season four or three of League of Legends? Uh, uh, four, I believe. And champions have only gotten better since. And there was not a hint of sarcasm in my voice if you thought about it. But a fight oh. comes out that we just almost forgot to narrate. Camille drops <laughs> Yasuo. Oh, my lord. Kane going to back off does not want another piece of Camille. Camille looking very strong with that Divine Sunder. Having five and a half thousand personal gold in her name. Almost all of it in her inventory. Yasuo, you know, thought the Blade of the Ruined King was the uh, spicy buy. But that item is better against tanks than it is against bruisers. Oh, and the to dodge she responds but kane uses a q to dodge her hook shot kane gonna slide through almost gets the damage doesn't quite get enough save on the turret maokai locking up the malphite for four consecutive turret shots so much damage coming through just off the cc and that is an impressive turnaround from the blue team oh man you hate to see it but you know i think this top side might be a bit doomed and uh hopefully uh, red team kind of recognizes that and tries to put some some pressure elsewhere, because I don't think they are killing this Camille anytime soon. Yeah, Camille going to probably be a massive problem throughout the rest of the game, and you are correct. It would be wise for them to shift their focus. You know, bot lane turret is almost down. Caitlyn is pretty big, you know, doesn't have a bounty. She can still uh, play aggressively and afford to die, 
But, oh no. Oh, and Kane tries to defend the turret and it costs him his life. Yeah, not. We just it just seems to be going bad to worse here for Red Team. You know, they started off with those some of those early advantages from those plays in mid lane with the over aggression from Maokai and Anivia, but really haven't found much success since then on from mid to top side. They've like we talked about, they've gotten this success going in this bot lane. Take that turret down for first turret as well as opening up with you know 18 CS lead here and constantly having pressure, but. With the game yeah. being tied up one to one dragon, it's not even like that pressure was able to, uh, you know, translate into an early dragon stacking here. So, might be yeah. a bit rough here. But Kane he does finally have his red transform here, so it's a, a lot of power much spikes. stronger of a champion. Yeah, a lot of power spikes coming from the red team. You know, Kane finishes his mythic. Caitlyn finishes her mythic. Um, you have Kane's transformation. You've got a red buff coming up. They've got a lot of power on the map. I'd like to see him try and make a proactive play here. Yasuo looking to make the proactive play onto oh. Ezreal. Gets the Q, gets the ultimate, burns the summoner, has the additional armor pin, but seeing the karma will decide to back off, uses the tornado to disengage, and nothing else landing on the mid lane to continue the fight. So a really good attempt by Yasuo. Like Taking a collapse the here. On oh. Looking for the counter engage, lands the stun onto the Nami. So much damage coming through from the Anivia. Nami tries to disengage, but it isn't going to help. <sighs> and you see Lutin. just that layered CC that Maokai can bring in. He wasn't even he wasn't even in range to even get the root down with his W. But Camille and Anivia landing was all he needed. Yeah, but they're just still the going for more. So much damage coming out from this Camille. Caitlyn just does not get to play the game. Karma looks to continue. The turret is ramped up. The turret is angry, and the turret has destroyed Karma. Oh my lord. Kane <laughs> trying just... to pick up another kill, and the yes! turret kills Camille. Oh, oh man. Man, that would have been a nice 1,000 gold shutdown going over to the Kane, but just barely lives with that Triumph proc, and they didn't even get the gold from the Karma as she ended up getting executed as well, so... Just not getting anything out of this. Now losing their whole jungle, losing the dragon, but Yasuo has something to say about this. And Ezreal might be losing his life as Yasuo comes through, spins through. Malphite on the engage onto the Maokai. Yasuo crosses the map at the blink of an eye. He's going for another kill on the tank while Anivia CCs his entire team. So much disengage provided from this mid laner. Tanks the Caitlyn ultimate. Red team won't be able to continue and they bought time for the reinforcements, Anivia picking up the first kill. A lot of Camille's damage through. Caitlyn gonna be the one disengaging this time, but it might not help Nami, it might not be enough. Oh, Camille is stretching for this kill and by the tips of her fingers, she will just miss it. Oh man, real close there. Just one thing, it seems like every time Red Team tries to make a play, they're just slightly, not even making a play, but just even trying to punish Blue Team's plays. They're just slightly too little. Uh, in terms of damage, they're just slightly too late in the rotation here. And man, if they could have secured those kills onto Malkai and Anivia before Camille could join, that would have been a pretty big swing for them. But as it stands, you know, Blue Team was able to secure another dragon. They were able to trade back a kill back as well. And, you know, opening up, you know, one and a half thousand gold lead isn't a whole lot here at 19 minutes. But, I mean, you would say that they scale pretty well here and are pretty comfortable in this game state having shut down this Malphite pretty hard as well as Kane really hasn't been able to get a lot done after that first gank. Yeah, uh, you know, the gold lead might not look that impressive, right? And neither will this Ezreal's life as Yasuo cuts him down to size like a fruit ninja. Oh man, I hope that wasn't too offensive. Uh, but yes... What you were saying, they have, you know, a 700 gold lead at this point. You know, a 1,000 gold lead at the time of the caster curse commencing. But they have all the momentum in the game. The one character that they have behind in their Ezreal, you know, has time to scale, has time to sit back. And Ezreal's perfectly fine with that. But they're aggressive champions. The one they need to put their foot on the gas. And the ones that have been doing well. All the money's on them, so they're able to accelerate the pace of the game if they want to. They have control of the game state, and they have all the momentum here, so we'll see if they're able to make use of it, or if they are going to crumble. Yeah, one thing I would like to see here is just uh, Camille just stop going top lane, and Camille's just mashing this Yasuo. 
as Yasuo might get picked off here in this 3v1. Yasuo has a lot of damage, but they pass the shutdown onto Ezreal and Nivea, having to use her consumable stopwatch that will likely force her into Azania's next purchase. Might have been that way anyways, but... Yeah, but, you know, like like I was saying, is no one on red team can match Camille, and Camille's really the only person who can aggressively match Yasuo. Uh, Anivia should be fine just to sit under wave and clear, but Anivia can do this, that same thing against Malphite and actually put out some pressure, whereas Camille can just shut down this Yasuo pretty easily in the 1v1. So we get another 1v1 between 80 carries here. Oh, Ezreal takes down the Caitlyn, has much more damage with that red buff, and another fight breaks out in the top lane. Two fights going on simultaneously. Kane takes down the Ezreal, and Camille takes down the Malphite. No surprise at the outcome of either of those based on the setup that we were able to see, but it's unfortunate we can't have a camera in two places at once. Oh, we're just starting up Baron here. They know it's warded. You can see the, the ward ping down, so they know that they were doing this on vision with no pink wards, but... They're just saying you can't do anything to stop us, so we'll see if Kane can get in here and maybe give a steal or just force yeah, them off this objective in general. Hoping they have the DPS, but Kane has already arrived, a very fast champion at traversing the map, so they won't find the time they need to complete the Baron, decide to back off of it, red team decides the same, everyone returning to reset, get their gold, farm up their camps, and see what happens in the next stage of the game. Yeah. And like you said, it looks like this Anivia is going for that Zanya second. She just picked up that Seeker's Arm Guard, so delaying that Seraph's embrace a bit, knowing she needs a bit more safety here with yeah, the Zonyas. Her Seraphs will be coming in extremely late, and another thing to point out is that it will be stacked very late. Anivia wasn't able to get a tier as early on as one might desire as an Anivia. As you'll notice, she has only 75 stacks on the tier. Now, yeah. it doesn't take Anivia the longest to stack it up, so it might sync up, you know, and be stacked before she makes her purchase because of the Zanya's delay. So it's hard to criticize it, especially against an all-AD team. But Yeah, and I mean, that you can just use that Zonia's if you're fast enough just to react to the Malphite ult, and you've just shut down pretty much their entire engage. So you're, you're kind of the primary target since Ezreal has so many ways to get away, but Camille's just looking for this all-in way ahead of her team, but... And not going to be able to find it. Malkai like ult will be burned as well, looking for the follow-up engage. And, you know, I really like this setup here by Blue Team. The dragon, they were a little early to the dragon setup. Oh, but just Camille aggressive. goes for the kill. <laughs> slices up the fish into sushi, but gets sliced up herself. The shutdown onto Kane. A lot of damage coming out from the red team here as Caitlyn's able to get all these headshots off. Oh, and another kill onto the Kane. Kane knocks up the backline once more. Maokai tries to go in and get some return kills, but it's not going to be helpful as Kane cleans up the quadra kill. Anivia desperately trying to get away. Caitlyn ult brings her down below half health. Wall almost saves her, but Kane's able to traverse walls very easily, trying to buy time with more CC, drops the ultimate, gets the distance, but she's on the wrong side of the map to be retreating. Kane looking to close it down as Dragon is looking to shut down Caitlyn. She has to pick up a couple fruit to survive. Anivia on the chase of her life. The extended death timer might deny the pentakill, but it also makes it very easy for the red team to take Baron. This he dragon's gonna get a kill. Sins. The dragon gets a kill on the Caitlyn, not secured. The TP comes through to save the Anivia, and Kane is shut down for his Hubri. Maybe chasing the pentakill a little too far. Oh, man. That was, I mean, such a great setup by Blue Team, but they just went a bit too aggressive there going into the jungle. I like their original setup. They got to Dragon early, they put wards into the red side jungle, and they started posturing aggressively, knowing that they were stronger. But then Camille just went way too far for the team to follow up and get, just got immediately chained CC'd with a beautiful Nami wave into the Malphite ult. She just never had a chance to move once she landed on her target, and the turnaround Jane got from real the red fed team, off that. Yeah, was very aggressive from the red team. The turnaround was very good, but, you know, I would have liked to have seen them, you know, play it slowly, realize that they can't put their foot on the gas pedal indefinitely. And speaking of foot on the gas pedal, Camille <laughs> takes down the fish. <laughs> Returning to the scene of the crime, never a good time for this fish, you know? So. You know, but sometimes <laughs> it's about the message, you know? You failed to kill her once, and right, it results in your team getting aced, but... <laughs> oh man, a lot of damage coming through, and Anivia not able to use a clutch wall to escape Yasuo this time.
Oh, but, you know, one big thing for Blue Team, oh, well, you know, Kane got that quadra kill there. It, due to the fact that they went chasing, and even Nami went chasing for the kill with Kane, no one, Caitlyn thought she could do it herself, but was not able to. The dragon. And because she went down to it, it's just a dragon over to Blue Team, and now they're on sole point. Yeah, a very Already critical is. point for the blue team. You know, would have been an amazing game recovery for the red team to take it to two and two on dragons. That's a lot more time for them to stall out and look for another turnaround, but they were not able to capitalize on that opportunity. The greed for the Pentakill got the best of them. Yeah, you know, Phoenix, he, he didn't play in last split, but he saw last split stats, and he saw there wasn't a single Pentakill all season. And he's like, you know, I'm going to change that in the first game of exhibitions. Unfortunately, he, just not quite able to get it. Yeah, he did his best. <laughs> now, uh, now that we do have that Zanya's coming, we're presumably going to get to that um, Seraphs for this Anivia shortly. One thing I didn't mention when I was talking about the buffs is the passive on the Seraphs got changed. It's no longer you get health back for mana you spend. It is now a lifeline passive like Shield Bow or Ma. You're going to get a big shield based off your current mana when you drop below 30% HP. So it's a huge buff to defensive Seraph users like Rise or Anivia, where they're just so much tankier than they used to be because of this massive shield they get when you try and, you know, take them down below 30%. So a lot more survivability going to be coming out on this Anivia once she can finish that item. Yeah, and that is a crucial turning point, you know, because a lot of the strategy of the red team hinges upon killing the Anivia before she's able to help her team disengage you know the anivia ultimate makes it very easy for the rest of the team's crowd control to hit it takes up a large area it can partially go through walls to stop kane from walking through them and not being able to kill that anivia quickly in the team fights is going to be very detrimental to the ability of the red team all right let's see here we have a dragon coming up in two minutes we have baron up now we'll see if blue team wants to try and put any pressure here towards the baron or if they're just content to wait Walking Looks like they're getting vision. Here. Oh, but this vision might be too aggressive. Flash is used as Nami uses the wing to follow a massive knockup coming from the Yasuo. Maokai and Kane. Kane does not make it out alive. Maokai barely does. Anivia so low going to fall to the Caitlyn. A lot of damage coming through from the Yasuo onto the blue team as all of the members of blue team are suddenly dead. Camille wasn't there. Uh, and I mean, that's the big problem here with your split pusher being your strongest member. Now, this is very risky here to try and start up this Baron. This Camille can 2v3 you, especially when oh, you're taking. And she the sees Baron. the opportunity, blood in her eyes. Well, they need the to get off of this, but they don't see it. They don't see it till now. Oh, and they're going to go down. Camille gets a really good flank engage. Caitlyn trying to get as much damage off before she goes down, but two kills picked up from the Camille. A shutdown from the Yasuo and a triple kill from the Nami going to give her an immense amount of gold. Man, Camille played that so well, though. You said she could have just used the ult originally just to go straight onto the Caitlyn, but she actually waited and used it on the Yasuo when he tried to dash in with the Q2 stacked up to just avoid the knockup entirely and just was able to cut Yasuo down as soon as she landed rather than being locked up in that all knockup combo. So well played by uh, African Rhino here to, you know, execute that 2v3. But now Death Coin Flip might be in a bit of trouble here over Extend. Arma might not have the health to lock him down. Will get away with a sliver of health keeping her safe. Looks like both teams, or the red team looking for the disengage. The blue team is looking for the chase. Looking for the better dragon positioning that is up in 30 seconds, but your support's having to recall. Might want to get your characters all healed up and on the field ready to fight as quickly as possible because red team is going for it. Yeah, 22 seconds here for dragon. Ezreal just backed. Oh, no, yeah, he and decided and to blue cancel team it. He just backing, that. you can see Yasuo teleported just so that his team could have better positioning, which is very important to get as soon as the Drake spawns. Yeah, blue team had gotten positioning on all the other setups, but now red team's actually able to get the setup in time. Drop these Caitlyn traps, but they haven't started it yet, and now Karma is almost here. She's kind of wrapped around the back. Would like to see her just get up with her team instead of poking over the wall here. Looks like that's oh, what they're the, going to do. The Caitlyn traps were not much of a threat. You know, blue team knowing that if they step on these traps, they take what? A headshot with rapid fire cannon that does, like, I guess 100 damage? But oh. we will see if she can do more than that. Fights breaking out. Camille goes deep and Caitlyn won't be doing any damage. She'll be dead. 
Fight continues as the dragon gets within smite range and the blue team comes up with it. The Kimtex soul going to immediately make them all tankier in their low health bars. But their health bars aren't even low. So they're just going to be destroying the red team. All of their members are dead. And we're probably going to see a massive, massive push from the blue team. And the quadra kill going over to African Rhino. As uh looks like they're trying to go for the, the Baron here. I think they probably could just push for the end with 30 seconds left on the Yasuo and Kane, but playing a bit safe here, looking to get this Baron as well as the Sol. Yeah, but I think a lot of Red Team comes out. Red Team's just going. a little bit too focused on what they would ideally like to do of diving this backline and not leaving enough protection for this Caitlyn. I mean <laughs> Nami is not enough to protect her from this Camille. You really need that Malphite ult specifically for the Camille to try and buy time for the CC chain. But, you know, now with Soul and Baron, Camille just completed her GA as well. I don't really see an angle that Red Team can stand up in a fight, and they're kind of just hoping that Blue Team makes some big mistake here. But it should be pretty easy for Blue Team just to group up together and go down a lane. Yeah, looking like a very straightforward game plan from the blue team. You've got all the momentum. You've got a 5,000 gold lead. You've got the Dragon Soul, providing you another few thousand gold in stats. And, you know, if you know you're just going to win slamming it down mid lane, then go for the slam down mid lane. Camille going for the slam onto the fish, going to be locked up. Caitlyn trying to get the follow-up trap, but won't find it. As they go onto the cane instead, Karma landing the first of the CCs. Camille bringing down the hammer, Maokai's diving the turrets, the fish is dead anyway, and that will likely be the end of the game, barring any massive outplays here from the red team. They will be looking to cut down these minions, maybe by a few extra seconds, but it's not looking too hopeful as the blue team, you know, reforms around this wave, and we'll see what happens here. Yeah, here comes the Camille going in for the finish. Look, she still has her ult as well, just to isolate someone, but... Oh, the Malphite ult onto two, gets a lot of damage out. Malphite falls, but they still got both of their damage dealers up. They bought a lot of time, but oh, Yasuo falls at the edge of his base. They just and can't Caitlyn kill Camille. Too. Yes, Camille is just far too tanky. 23 kills, one death, and worth a thousand gold at the moment. Looks like it might be made 24, not quite. You know, I think... Uh... African Rhino put a, a big statement there that, you know, maybe you should be looking to draft him pretty high up on the, on the, in the draft here. Yeah. So. If you're going to look at a top lane performance from anyone, you know, someone that's, you know, <laughs> maybe not, you might not look and say, oh, he's going to stomp every top laner in the lead. But when you look at what he did with his lead, I would say that he was very effective throughout this game. It, you know, being with his team, mostly when he needed to, we saw a couple mistakes, but that's okay. You know, uh, it, it's not going to be perfect teamwork, especially in these exhibition matches. But, you know, knowing your role within the team, like I said, you know, he played very well around his lead, being with his team when he needed to be at the primary objectives, doing very well in these fights, showing a lot of, like, control and restraint on his champion to know when he had to use what abilities, and was able to be, you know, I would argue the MVP of this game. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. You know, it was it was pretty even, and even, you know, red team sided a bit on the rest of the map, but the amount of pressure that Camille was able to put out, just, they didn't really have a reliable way to deal with her. And we saw how many autos Caitlyn put into her, and it just didn't matter. So, you know, this would, hopefully red team can, you know, bounce back a bit, have a bit better performance in their second game. But I think we were going to send it to a break here. And when we come back, we will have our second game of the night. All right. We will see you then.
And welcome back to our second draft of the night for our second round of games. On the blue team, well, actually, we don't need introductions this time because we have an amazing programmer who undid Riot's anonymous patch in his free time between games. So, straight yeah, in with the bands, Ryan. What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think... Uh... These, these bands seem pretty typical against uh, for a team playing against Sonic. Um, Banning out Tredemir Aatrox, you know, those are very, very common and well-known uh, Sonic champions that you normally don't like to play against, so very much expected. The Kindred and possibly this Lilia band coming in against Gale. So there been two champions that he's been spamming and has been well-known for in the past, so... Lots of yeah. respect bands going out here. Ixie's best champion to some is also Draven, so just some um, some standard respect bands against uh, their lane opponents here. Yeah, looks like blue team's going to pick up the Karthus. A very interesting pick. Can be flexed to multiple positions. Red team responds by picking up the entire bot side of the map, so <laughs> perhaps we'll see a Karthus Zyra bot. Man, Harvey is continuing this tradition. He just picked up Zillion at the end of Season 1 and played it all through playoffs, and he's just starting picking up where he left off and just playing his Zillion again in exhibitions. So. You know, for a moment there, I thought you meant Season 1 of League of Legends, and <laughs> I fully believed you that he just has not stopped playing this champion since. <laughs> he might have played a couple champions in between. Um, but we do get the bot lane answer here from Blue Team. Zaya is a AD carry I really like on this current patch. It's it just it hits real pretty hard. It has its natural safety. It's been one of the best performing AD carries for a bit now. So just locking that in here to go up against the Sephilios and Zillion along with the Zyra as we get another Yasuo game. Yeah, Yasuo, you know, his dash speed through minions does scale with movement speed, if I recall correctly, <laughs> and nobody facts checks me. So Zillion speeding him up <laughs> makes for a very dangerous player. All right, we will see if there we get some more, you know, respect bands coming towards Sonic, and we are. As yes. the set's going to be coming out, just taking off one more of those champions as we get the, the Malzahar band coming out. And do we see Garen? <laughs> see here, do we get the Garen ban? Do we get a Darius ban? We actually get a Zack ban coming out against Doki, who did play it in their first game of the exhibitions. Uh, yeah, it looks so. like a lot of focus onto the mid lane here, I'm assuming, with the Swain and the Malzahar bans. But perhaps the Karthus is going mid lane? Or do you think that's more likely to be a jungle or a top lane? I feel like you're setting yourself up for failure if you're playing Karthus mid lane into Yasuo. Um, but then again, I also think you're setting yourself up for failure if you pick Malzahar into Yasuo and they ban that. But as an experienced Malzahar player, that you feel good about yourselves for about two levels. <laughs> and then after that, you never have the damage to kill Yasuo. He can always kill you. Yeah. So it's uh, not, not the best time. <laughs> for the red team... Responding with Viego and Orn. So it looks like it will be a Karthus mid lane. Man, that's that's gonna be a little rough here. It's already hard to hit the Karthus Skittles. And Yasuo um is pretty mobile when he's inside of your minion wave killing you. So uh, we'll very see easy. how well Molly is able to execute this. But especially against a Diana, not having any sort of innate escape besides flash against the Yasuo Diana combo. Could spell disaster for this mid lane. And especially when uh, the combo can be sped up by, you know, Zillion. <laughs> making the movement speed faster on the Diana. You know, a very scary champion can do the same thing. There's a lot of dive coming out from the red team. Uh, just makes you wonder if maybe it wouldn't have been better to speed up all the champions at once and see a uh, Sivir pick. But, you know, <laughs> sticking with comfort, sticking with the champions, you know. Maybe Sivir's not good this patch, and I'm just ill-informed, but... Our comps will be locked in, and, you know, which team comp do you prefer looking at both of these, you know, complete compositions? You know, I if we're, I prefer red team's comp here just because how easy it is to execute in the mid game. And while once you get to late game, this Karthus might just kill everyone with his alt, just walking into people level 16 for items. 
I feel like red team has the tools to just end the game and get a sizable lead before that Karthus ever has a chance to scale into this game. Um, but I do think red team has to be a little bit careful about their bot side, which could be relatively at risk here against their uh, the Zyra and uh, Zyra with the Viego ganks. But I think if red team can play safe in bot side and just enable their solo laners to be these big carry split push forces, they should have a pretty good chance here of just snowballing the game early and then ending it quickly. I definitely agree. The red team will have to snowball because I'm looking at what the blue team has and if that team gets ahead, it just does not leave a whole lot of room for the blue team to come back barring, you know, the big five-man Diana into Zillion stun, you know, the big wombo combos that can take a whole team out, but just a little bit of gold ahead on the Viego and it's not like the red team has any, you know, extremely tanky members to slow his rampage down if he gets rolling. Yeah, and we'll see. It's kind of going to be on Harvey here. Um, the blue team has a lot of isolated damage if they catch someone out between the Zyra, Viego, and then Karthus. But if Harvey can land some good, well-timed alts and kind of deny some of that burst, it can give red team a lot more time to fight in these skirmishes um, or to allow other people to get into position. Because while they do have a really good burst opener of the Diana Yasuo, if Diana's not there to set it up immediately, they need a bit of time to get into the fights, build up stacks on the Aurelia and Yasuo before they can actually start blowing through the whole team. So the, the Zillion defensiveness here could give them a lot of time to actually start sc scaling up in the fights, stacking up before they finally find the angle to just blow everyone up. And time is the name of the game, especially when you're playing Zillion. And speaking of time, I believe it is time for us to go to an intermission. Uh, great transition.
And we have gotten into this game with a first blood on Todoki. Might regret not having that flash ability, but seems pretty stubborn in insisting that it is not necessary. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't think Doki's going to be thinking, maybe I should have flash. Uh, I, actually, I don't think it's physically possible for him to think that. So, you know. <laughs> well... In return for the first blood, uh, blue team will have burned three summoners. The flash from the Orn, who is mid lane, and the flash and ignite from the Zyra. So we don't get to see the mid Karthus, we get to see the mid lane Orn. You know, I'm not sure the Karthus into Aurelia is much better than the Karthus into um, Yasuo, but... I would almost argue that it is much worse. <laughs> <laughs> we will see how it plays out, but... Important thing though, Ixy did get that first blood, and now he gets to start the lane with an extra long sword. So... Absolutely huge for AD carries. A uh, little bit of AD goes a long way when every single one of your trades and wave management is tied to that auto attack. Aurelia immediately full stacking her passive and showing Karthus exactly why it's a bad idea. Karthus trying to get as many return skills as he can, but doesn't shave off the same amount. A very positive trade for the Aurelia, showing him that he will not be having a good time in this lane. Yeah, I mean, with the Karthus starting tier, he has no combat stats. He just has his potions to try and sustain himself. But with the Doran Shield plus the potion star from Aurelia, Sid have to land a lot of good trades to try and actually poke him out. And now the stun oh, lands. Stun lands! Ignite comes down and Flash will be burned from Karthus. And based on the wave positioning, it looks like he might have to burn the teleport as well. Yeah, I think he's going to have to burn this TP here with 4 CS. He's not going to be able to get anything off this recall besides resetting his Fight is bar. breaking out bot and again because brewing in the mid lane as Orn comes in with a lot of damage onto the Yasuo. Yasuo tries to escape, but Diego is there to catch him. Yeah, almost was able to, you know, get out there by Yasuo. He's able to win wall the stun from Diego. He was just pushed so far up where he didn't really have an option to use that flash to get away. So... Smartly just holding on to that. But, uh, you know, we really got to keep our, our focus, you know, on this this top lane here with this. Karthus not having flash anymore, already down the TP. If he takes a bad trade here, you know, they could just kind of end the laning phase entirely. As uh, he gets a little bit of reprieve here as Sonic is running the Ignite, not the TP. But, you know, when Sonic yes. gets back, it's got to be real careful. Yeah, probably feeling pretty fortunate that Sonic wasn't in a position to punish him for teleporting back to that wave. You know, you saw the Diana topside ready to set up the dive, but Sonic, you know, thought nothing was going to come together, wasn't able to see the angle, decides to take the recall, and because of that, Karthus, at the moment, you know, is at least even in CS. Has a 2 CS lead, but I'd imagine if we zoomed in on that wave, it is pushing towards the Aurelia, so probably going to yeah. see them being closer to even. Yeah, and good job by this Viego here. I believe that wave is pushing away from the Karthus. Viego is just up here hoping that Sonic goes for something aggressive, but Sonic playing passively here, I don't know if he saw the Viego or if he's just assuming that's where he is, seeing as there's nothing going on on bot side, but... Well, you know, when you spend the first, you know, minute of the game absolutely shredding her up, <laughs> and a fight breaks out, Diana gets the flank, E's over prematurely, and Ixie uses the flash to avoid a stun, locks up the Zyra, and Zyra doesn't have a lot of base stats, will fall, a massive root comes out from Ixie, but no damage to follow up and get the kill. A very nice game for the red team to pick that up. You don't really think of Zillion as the aggressive gank setup, but when he just flashes forward and slows you, I guess that's enough. Very hard to outplay the flash slow from Zillion. Yeah. You know, a massive wave for Ixie. He does not want to give this up, but if you're on the side of the red team, you do not want him catching this experience. You want all of this to go to waste. Red team yeah. seems to notice that. Look looks oh, like he took the to tower. Oh, tanking the tower is not what you want to do on the Aphelios. They was probably hoping that Zillion would tank it, but they're not going to be able to deny the wave now. Zyra is going to come back and share a little bit, the, bit of this, but Zaya got to catch a lot of that experience solo. Already level four. Yeah, I don't think he thought that Ixie was going to be walking that aggressively up, and the uh, Infernum just splashed off the tower and hit Ixie, which is why he pulled aggro there. So weren't wasn't quite expecting that splash damage to come in. And uh, well played by Ixie to uh, you know, be able to catch that wave and deny any sort of dive they were trying to set up. Yeah, and to do so without using the sum uh, Summoner Spell Exhaust is very commendable. And... 
You know, that's uh, we we zoom zoom out here. We see the Aurelia just hitting six now. That's a lot more kill threat down here in, uh, in top lane. But oh, Yasuo and the Zyra trouble. Rome looking to get it. Yasuo looks at the level four Zyra, says, you don't have a whole lot of stats. Going to burn her flash, but without the wind wall, he's susceptible to the Ord ultimate as Viego comes up and finishes him off once more. And well played there. Just knowing the limits, flashing away from the tornado, did not trade back the kill. And then Gale flashing over the wall with his stun prepped to tune that CC and just close the gap quickly to not give Yasuo any chance to escape. You know, well played there. Yasuo was almost able to get the outplay, but just too many people showed up. Well, and the root comes down, but it's into a massive wave of minions when Aphelios has both of the combat guns that he wants, so not going to be able to follow that up into anything. Looks like bot lane really just wanting to play this a little slowly. You know, you've already got a little bit of a lead. Just make sure you don't throw that lead, and you're in a pretty good, you know, lane state because the rest of the map for you is snowballing, and that's what your team wants. Yeah, we got to uh, think. If we got to pay attention here. I believe jungler should be hitting six here, maybe in two camps, uh, and that's going to be a pretty big power point for both of them. Their alts are kind of crucial to both of these kits. Diana can't really do a lot of ganking without it. So we'll see if Doki gets a bit more aggressive once he has that six, trying to pair up with this Yasuo or Aurelia. I mean, we normally think of the Yasuo-Diana uh, combo, just easy alts. But, I mean, he, the same thing really happens with the Aurelia, especially against an immobile champion like Karthus. It's going to be a little bit easier to take down than trying to take out Orn in this short mid lane. So yeah, we'll the see. ultimate ability, uh, the junglers and the solo laners, will definitely change the landscape of this game. Is, uh, Viego was able to get six first and just covering for Karthus this whole time, looking for Aurelia to try and get aggressive, which he might try to do. But Sonic seems to have the read that uh, nothing's really going to happen. Yeah, you that, know, uh, jungle's there. It's definitely, you know, uh, not to downplay, you know, the skill with which Sonic is playing this matchup, but <laughs> there's not many times that Karthus gets aggressive against you, you know? <laughs> so if Karthus is being aggressive, there's pretty solid chance that Viego's watching him. <laughs> what, you normally don't get auto-attacked under your own turret by Karthus? It's not something you see every day when the jungler's not around. Uh, only <laughs> by, you know, the psychopath players that leave you wondering where the jungler must have been if he wasn't there. <laughs> Alright. Let's see if either of these teams are looking to start one of these neutral objectives with the Dragon and Herald being up. Neither jungle's really taken a pass at them so far more prioritizing the lanes. But as we said that Gale might be looking, it looks like he's gonna divert his attention over to this mid lane, but Doki is on Herald, but he has no support. But it doesn't look like Blue Team's actually has the radies there. And... Yeah, I mean, you don't really need that much support to take the Herald if the Blue Team doesn't have vision of it. <laughs> yeah, it looked a little scary with Karthus starting to walk towards River with Orn having push, but Karthus just went to ward and Gale no making wiser. a play on the bottom side of the map. Will lock up and stun the Aphelios. Aphelios popping an exhaust in an ultimate. Flashes aggressively to go for the kill, and Gale has been shut down. Aphelios picking up a lot of gold, and he will be able to get away thanks to the zillion speed. Yeah, and th that was just an ill-advised play there by the blue team. Ixie was trying to farm a wave under a turret. You cannot 2v2 uh, this bot lane here, especially with zillion having the ult already. I mean... I think the Aphelios would have had to really out, outplay himself for uh, that to turn in anything positive for Blue Team. But now Toast yeah, has to run away from that Aurelia. Outside of the 2v2 lane, the 1v1 lane of top is definitely going in Sonic's favor. We see the 24 CS lead, the positive wave positioning, burning the flash of the Karthus. We might see the dive set up soon with Diana being on the top side of the map, but Viego's here as well. I'm predicting we might see a 2v2 breakout. Looks like we might see some two 1v1s instead as the both junglers are going to run into each other and it doesn't look like there's a blast come for Doki. Doki he just trying he to fight. avoid... Yeah, he does have a level on him right now. Might win the fight regardless, but Karthus is closer. He stacks the Conqueror, might want to keep it stacked. Pops the ultimate when they're both near. Gets a lot of damage down, but it's not enough. Doki's dead. And that's a, it's a little weird, but I think he could have just walked out past the Viego, but maybe he thought the Orn was closer than he was. Um, yeah. But either way, just giving up his life there. 
Another kill over to this Viego, who's uh, kind of snowballing here, already up to three kills and almost has his Mythic completed. So it could be a bit of a problem here, but as we it say that Sonic was able to deny more CS while the Karthus went to help his team, so... That is true. You know, a lot of CS did crash into that turret. Shared experience from the Karthus. You do not see a level lead coming out for the Aurelia, though. So good experience management from the Karthus. Knows how much he can afford to pick up or not. Zyra drops the ultimate in an attempt to kill the Zillion. Doesn't really come close, and a lot of health is going to be traded back from the Zyra as the red team looks to be picking up another objective here. Blue team trying to get into position to fight for it, but it doesn't look like he's going to be close. Red team picking up the dragon with the smite. A fight might break out afterwards as the Karthus ult comes in. It's a lot of damage. Doki falls once more, but the red team has already made the disengage. Blue team looking for the chase down as Ornol comes through. Aphelios trying to put out what damage he can. Gets the Zillion revive. <laughs> Gale flies over the wall with Diana's corpse. Manages to take out the Zillion. Aphelios is alive again. Wondering who he's going to chase. Chooses the closer Aphelios. Gets that kill as well. And Yasuo is the only member who was there to make it out with his life still intact. But... The red team does claim the dragon. Yeah, well played there by blue team. They know they have the advantage. They know Sonic can't TP. He has no TP to join the fight. And Karthus couldn't just step back a, a couple steps and drop that out for support. And it's really the four and a half V5. And then the Orn patiently waiting for that wind wall. But as we say, that toast might be going down. <laughs> the ultimate comes out from Aurelia and you just do not have the movement speed to walk away. But... Of note, Karthus clears the entire wave, getting that good old Babas good death gameplay, finishes the <laughs> Mythic. Yeah, there we go. But uh, like I was saying, if you see uh, that, that first fight by Dragon, uh, Yasuo windwalled pretty early on to protect from the Viego stun, and Orn just sat there and waited for that windwall to disappear. Walked, and then once they walked up into that choke point, then he let it go once the wind ball was already down and was able to lock up some people with it. So, you know, yeah, good essential awareness by the Orn, but now might be getting a little scrap here in top lane. Harold is popped. Will not be quite enough to get the turret as Sonic has to use the flash to retreat. Karthus on the chase down with his Qs won't be able to find quite enough damage as the camera pans away to look towards the fight bot. Very boring trade as the fight top continues. Yasuo taking a lot of damage from the Orn, enough to shave off a quarter of his health bar as the blue team looks for the chase down. Doki gets slowed up once more, eating a lot of CC. Karthus Q after Karthus Q coming in. The Skittles are doing a lot of damage, and Doki tastes the rainbow again. <laughs> yeah, that he does. And uh, looks like he might be, you know, doing that for a while. He is trying to get this Zonia's first item, which is a bit interesting for Diana. It's going to leave him lacking a lot in terms of damage output, but maybe he's just looking to try and live that initial engage and let his teammates do the damage for him. You know, and that might be the play. You know, when you're 4 perhaps you just have to accept, okay, I get it. The only thing useful about me right now is if I press R in the middle of four of them, Yasuo and Aurelia get a chance. So you go for the early Zonyas. It's not the most expensive item. It gives you a little bit of armor to help survive, you know, the snowballing members of Viego and, uh, you know, a little bit of damage coming out from Zyra. The rest of it's magic, though. But, you know, you get the really powerful active. Karthus might be wishing he had that active at the moment as Aurelia just eviscerates him with max attack speed. Oh, my. That looks fair and balanced. But you know, I don't... Sonic does that on a lot of champions. As the fight continues, Diana pulling in the ultimate, gonna eat a lot of damage, pops the Zonia despite having the Zillion ultimate, miss time, exhaust, and will be getting revived just on the tip of that. But the fight comes to the mid lane as Yasuo takes a little bit of damage, going to eat the Viego ultimate and going to fall. Viego picks him up under the turret no! and trades back a kill as a result. Why did he pick up the body? It's, <laughs> it was first known to us as Lee Syndrome, but I believe in this Zoomer day and age, we might call it something along the lines of Viego Syndrome, <laughs> because man, the amount of times that I have seen a Viego kill himself by picking up a body that he didn't need to, alarmingly high. Oh man, that's a, a passing over, I believe that was a, he had a shutdown there, passing that over to Yasuo, that's a, Probably not the target you want to be giving money back over to after doing a pretty good job of, you know, stopping his snowball, already 
was already at zero and three before that. Yeah, they're definitely going to be feeling the 33% of the way that he is to his 10 death power spike. So we'll see if he's able to make it all the way there before the game's over. But, you know, it is a critical point for Yasuo players to reach. Yeah, this is, uh, it's kind of, even though the gold lead doesn't look like it, red team still has a gold lead. It's kind of snowballing against red team here, because if you look at that gold lead, and you take the gold lead Sonic has out and the 1v1, red team is probably pretty far behind here in terms of this 4v4. That doesn't really bode well for them. If uh, they can figure out how to play a little bit more safer in these sidelines and not let you know Sonic just run run them through on the, the sideline. You know, but... and Karthus is, in my opinion, an underrated side laner. You know, he doesn't need to use the teleport to affect the team fight. He just presses R and he sits under his turret. And, you know, maybe he's, you know, a mage and squishy and you can tower dive him. But what happens if you get slowed under his turret while he's dead and continues to just hit Skittles on you? But that question will be have to answered later as a fight breaks out the river. The Carthisol coming in, shredding off a lot of the health of the red team. Red team gonna get locked up as Doki's in the middle. Doki is now down. Red team continues the engage, but blue team has disengaged it with Zyra ultimate. Sonic not able to really get on top of the members. He's got the Zillion ultimate. He's got the Zyra, but he's also got the death fed to him by Zaya. Oh, Yasuo falls and Viego is able to pick up his corpse, but the fight will not continue any further than that. Yeah, I mean, Red Team, they were just so uncoordinated in that fight. Doki took so much damage trying to get into the fight, and then when he ulted, Yasuo wasn't even in range to follow up on it, or if he was, decided not to press it. I think he might have just been out of range there to follow up on that ult, which uh, is a bit unfortunate because they did catch the Zaya in the ult, and she didn't pre-ult it first, so they could have maybe turned something around there, but just with how disjointed they were, plus the amount of damage that came out with that Karthus out coming in early, like you said, from the sideline. It's just so much damage for them, and they never found a good combo to follow up on. And you can see Sonic just barely wasn't able to take that 2v1 with low health on the back line. Yeah, he did eat a lot of crowd control from Desire, but we can discuss it later as Karthus is going to immediately erase Diana from existence with the help of Viego holding him down in place. Would have liked to have seen the kill pass over to the Karthus, but, you know, perhaps you don't want to reset his gold value. You know, perhaps you want Viego to snowball harder as well, so you never know what these teams are thinking at this point. Unfortunately, assists do, in fact, reset your gold value, so... No. A bit unfortunate there, as uh, Doki was able to steal the Herald there, but does rack up his sixth death of the game already. He might have uh, misread the memo on who's supposed to go 0-10. You know, yeah, the 0-10 power spike is much more powerful on the Yasuo than the Diana. You know, Yasuo came out at a much later date than Diana, so new champ difference, but Diana... New champ really difference on, like, an eight-year-old champion. <laughs> you know, to me, Yasuo will always be new. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, looks like Doki might be going for... Uh, what's... What's the item called? The, the purple one with the uh, the sucky suck. Jack uh, Show. Yeah, that one. Is that build out of Candle Jam? <laughs> I have no I don't, idea. I don't remember. I believe so. And this just shows how out of date we are with preseason, <laughs> season 13. You know, Riot really didn't hype me up this year. Didn't have any announcements <laughs> telling me that I should play the game. So I just sort of forgot. <laughs> True. It's uh. We see here, Orn has in fact has completed that item and now is looking for an engage. Oh, but he forgets that Yasuo can just wind wall his ultimate at the source. Doki going to make it out alive. You know, he might have seen Doki, thought that Doki was another free picking, but Doki managing to bait out that ultimate. Yeah. Uh, one thing to note about Jock Shows, it was touched in this tuning patches. We might just be trying to rush Baron here, but Blue Team seems to be aware. So let's see how this turns out as Karthus ults early. Oh, and the Karthus ult with Baron shredding resistance. Doesn't seem to do as much damage as it could have, but does do a lot of damage. You've got Doki caught out, separated from his team. He pops the Zhonyas, but it's not going to make a difference as he gets taken down. The fight continues on the other side of Baron. Harvey revives himself as the... A lot of damage is coming down. You can barely tell what's going on, but Aurelia's really is in there. She's getting DPS off. Karthus is trying his best to kill her. He will manage to get the kill. 
fight seems a little bit disjointed as Red Team crawls away with barely any health left on any other members. And it turns out they, you know, traded three for three there. I think Sonic and Stank did so much damage there at the tail end of that fight with... I'm not sure. I think Doki might have been looking for a setting up a flank, but when the Karth assault came out and his team just had to run, it kind of just left him there all by himself. And uh, when he tried to get out, just walked straight into the whole blue team there. And, but managed to trade it back quite evenly, and looks like we might be setting up for another fight as Dragon comes up in 40 seconds. And uh, we will see if they both teams decide to pause around. Both sitting at one on one, so not the biggest deal. If one team decides to give it up, but it doesn't look like either team is willing to do that at this point, because they're both making a beeline straight towards Dragon. Yeah, Ophelios foregoing the easy CS in the mid lane to get the early posturing on this Dragon. You know, he is definitely looking to try and secure this Drake. All right, we get a little bit of poking, but I'm blue team just forcing red straight out of the, uh, the river here. Trying to walk back in, but it doesn't look oh, like it's going well. The engage went to Doki. Doki picks up two members. Yasuo follows up. Ixi already at half health, but Yasuo gets stunned before he can do anything. Karth is already taken down. Karth is in the middle of the team fight. Falls. You can barely tell. Aurelia is on the backside, able to get take down one of the members. Ixi is dead, but they don't have any more damage to follow up. Aurelia not able to out. Oh, she almost is able to last the fight. Aphelios picks up the kill, and it's 1v1 again. Well, 2v1, actually. Zillion made it out of the fight and will be coming back to the Dragon, but can Orn 1v1 the AD carry? This is the state of AD carry in Season 13. Are you able to solo kill a tank? It is very close. Aphelios is fed. Orn is fed. And Aphelios falls! AD carry LUL! Yes, you hate to see it, man. And, you know, it's a, just a sad, sad sta state of these AD carries. You know, they... They just get so sad when they can't 1v1 a tank when they only have one item, you know, no armor pin or anything, and the tank's just able to kill their, you know, 1,000 total max HP. Yeah, so, yeah. It's not what you want to see, but <laughs> you can take a clip of that, of Orn walking slowly towards him and killing the Aphelios. And any time that someone says, but this champion's ranged, just send them that clip, bro. It doesn't matter anymore. This is season 13. Mobility creep is in full effect, even on champions that just walk at you. Good luck. Uh, you know, you can send that clip. You can also send the clip from five seconds earlier where the Orn got his own AD carry kill. So the Orn really killed two AD carries in that fight, but here comes the Superman ultimate! Diana brings it down for Yasuo. A lot of damage coming onto the blue team, but it might not matter. Red team is falling very quickly. Zillion already dead. Ixi on the Zaya, dead as well. Viego picks up the Diana, picks up her form. A very weak one, but gets rid of it immediately. Aurelia! Oh, and Aurelia falls to the Karthus. They do not want to sit on top of him. It's so much damage, but he's able to continue picking up champions, and he cleans up the rest of the red team! Reset City for Viego. Oh, man, they thought the AD carry was the primary target, but they just gave the resets over to... This Viego, and it was just over for them. He's just resetting off all these AD bruisers. And sure, Yasuo's not in the strongest strongest right now, only having one item. But when it picks him up, gets that health back, even gets the Yasuo passive for some more shield, and was able to transition that into taking out the Aphelios. And this uh, Viego kind of went from, you know, okay sitting in the game, you know, pretty even to 12 kills. And, uh,. It's looking a little rough here for Red Team, as only Sonic and the uh, Aphelios are really in this game. Yeah, I mean, you've got the money on potentially where you want it, right? Yasuo is going to hit the spike of 100% crit eventually. You know, he's already there with the buff to Infinity Edge because his passive gives him over 60. So <laughs> he doesn't need the most gold right now, but Aurelia needs the gold and Aphelios needs the gold. So they have their gold distributed well, but there's still 3,000 gold behind. And these fights just, you know, they might even start off in their favor with the four-man ultimate, but if you're not winning off the four-man ultimate, you got to ask yourself, you know, when are we going to win? Yeah, and uh, Aurel or Aurelia, Diana does finish this jock show, so it's going to be a bit tankier here. Uh, try and survive a bit longer, but when you build this more, like, tank-oriented, especially now that you don't build this Sunfire that does massive amounts of damage anymore, once Aurelia uses her com or Aurelia, D Diana uses her combo, when she's building this more tanky style, 
She doesn't offer a lot of follow-up damage beyond that, so it's very easy to just ignore this irrelevant. I keep saying it. The Diana, who has no CC besides her alt, so once she uses that, you just basically ignore her, and it's basically a caster or a melee minion running after you. So. Yeah, and we'll it looks like the engage really comes out from the Zillion, just speeds up the Aphelios who runs in there and runs to his death. Aphelios already down, not what you want to see. Doki teleports in there, but he will not last long. Karthus ult sends him to the Shadow Realm of being revived so that he will be sent to the Shadow Realm again. The Zanyas buys a little more time, but the Shadow Realm is inevitable! Yeah, try as he might, he was unable to avoid the Shadow Realm. Ends up hitting 10 deaths first. And uh, this should be a pretty easy Baron here for blue team. And the uh, game's kind of snowballing out of control at this point. Red team's really not able to find a good setup for the fights. And even if they are, they kind of have to hope for some sort of odd number of fights. Because they're just their damage just really isn't landing um, yeah, in these know, big 5v5s. Yeah, you want to see better focus, you know, try and pick off a member or two. But at the same time, as soon as one of them falls, Viego just comes off with reset after reset you know you might be asking yourselves you know do we need to take you know a numbers advantage fight but when the game's in the hands of the blue team right now and they're the ones with the steering wheel and the gas pedal how do you control that you know it's it's gonna be rough here i think the first thing they need to do is start getting some good vision control around these next objectives mainly this dragon here that's up in a minute and see if maybe you can find a pick onto this arrow while she's trying to walk in for the vision Maybe someone walks in by themselves, and if you have this vision control, you can at least pick where you're fighting and who you're fighting. Um, and that's probably their best chance of getting back into this game, is establishing this vision control. So one, they can start the split push with the Aurelia, and that they can try and find some picks and some odd number fights. Because taking these straight up 5v5s isn't really going to work out for them anymore. Yeah, uh, very true. You know, it all comes back to vision. I would even say that vision from the blue team is just as important because they want to be sieging turrets. They want to be taking fights, you know, even 5v5 where they know they have the advantage and they want to be doing as much as they can to accelerate and end the game while it's still in their favor. Yeah, it looks like we're going in for a little bit of collapse here, trying to find this odd number fight. Yeah, a lot of people coming in from a weird angle. The teleport comes out from Karthus as the Zanya comes out from Viego, but they're all grouped up! A lot of damage coming out, but it won't be enough to finish any of them off. They're still grouped up, and Aphelios gets the damage. Viego shut down, pass to the Aurelia. Karthus falls as well. His ultimate comes out, isn't able to finish any of them off, though. With their health bar still at the midpoint for most of the members of the red team, it looks like they'll still be in a strong position to take this dragon. Yeah, that should be good. That will be good enough to get this dragon, and... Just a little bit split up there by blue team. Exactly what we said red team needed to do is look for these odd number fights. And even though Yasuo wasn't there at the start to follow up on the Diana alt, they were just able to keep them locked up in enough time for their damage to finally arrive. And without being in this coordinated fight, they just, uh, blue team just kind of got pushed off and weren't able to follow up. And looks like red team trying to just apply pressure now across all these lanes here is trying to make a beeline running up the top lane but now sonic's gotta be a bit careful yeah i mean the good news for the red team is that making a play like that taking the dragon it slows down the game tempo and very importantly gets rid of a lot of the timer on the baron buff for the blue team you know they're not going to be able to regroup and set up another large push with the time they've got on baron left yep and as we look here we, you know i talked about how this level 16 karthus four items can really just start ripping apart this team He's level 16 now. He's about 1,000 gold away from a Void Staff. And uh, he can kind of just start 1v5ing this, uh, this game here, assuming he just has bodies around him that are dealing some passive damage. His ult's going to deal so much damage to these uh, members on Red Team who don't really have a lot of MR besides this Wiss End. And once that Void Staff gets completed, even that's going to start being shredded, so... Yeah, you know, you see the Merc Treads, you see the Wits End, and you're like, okay, Aurelia's tanky, she's good. Jack Show on Diana, also good. But looking at the rest of the team's items, there's just not even a scrap of magic resistance. You know, Yasuo has the Death's Dance to take damage slower, which can be helpful against a lot of, you know, mages, but not against Karthus. He doesn't really care. You take the damage anyway. All right, well, we will see if Red Team can find another one of those... Uh... You know, odd number fights is really what they got to keep looking for here. And I just want to see oh. blue team just group up together as 
He's running a after you. A lot Yasuo. of damage going on to the Osmo from the Zaya. Manages to wind wall the stun. Diego committing the ultimate to it. Thinks he's going to get him. Another stun comes through to stop him from getting the tornado. Actually, a massive stun from the Viego there. And I mean, now they're just going to keep following up onto Doki, who's just cut out. Is going to die again for the eleventh time here. Pops the alpha. Isn't going on. Holy cow! It does group them up for the <laughs> massive ult from Aphelios to take out the Zyra and make the Zaya low enough that she doesn't feel very comfortable pushing. Oh, but maybe she does. She looks at that turret, thinks she might be able to get a hit, but almost dies to the flamethrower! I think she's got to rethink that theory. <laughs> <laughs> Rethinks her position, and Orn goes for the back off, but Zillion pops the movement speed. You know, maybe wanted to chase a little bit. Decides oh. to, you know, let the... Toast. Let it be where it be. Oh, but Toast, not in a good position. Aurelia does a lot of damage to you in the 1v1 on this Karthus, and Harvey steals the kill. Uh, classic support players. Just uh, walking up, taking the kill with auto attack airy, you know, it's, uh, it's terrible. They just, they just really needed to input that damage. Well, I can hear it coming out of Harvey's mouth right now. You know, Zillion Bombs have a 90% AP ratio. You know, the gold is very good on him. It buys him the cooldown resistance for his ultimate, <laughs> and that is all a massive dose of copium. Aurelia should have gotten the kill. Yeah, he's he now he's you know three hundred gold closer to his death cap. Yeah, that he'll be building a sixth item. <laughs> <laughs> he's only about three and a half thousand gold away from it, but he's he's close. Very close. Yes. Uh, see here, and they are red team is able to be buying some time here, but uh, Baron's gonna be spawning here soon, and we'll see if red team's able to just set something up. Doki's trying to play here, but by himself, he doesn't really offer a lot of threat. Yeah, but look at how he's positioning. You know, he's going for that alternate angle. You know, his team comes in, so they're going to have to group up, but he decides he doesn't want that angle. Would rather just be with the team, maybe. A little bit indecisive as he walks back and forth. Same with his team. They're not really sure how they can go about contesting this Baron without the presence of their Aurelia, so they're calling back, they're regrouping, and it looks like they're going to be trying to group to contest this as five as Aurelia rotates towards the top side of the map. And I think, you know, it's not too bad for Blue Team to try and just force this Baron. They do have to be a bit careful, though. Um, but overall, I mean, they should be able to bait a pretty good fight on their terms just by trying to f clearing out Vision and forcing this Baron over and over again until someone makes a mistake. Because Orn tanking isn't going to take all that much damage from this Baron. And between Karthus and Zaya, and even the Blade of the Rune King on Viego, they shred this pretty quickly. Yeah, and you can already see Baron at half health before I can even start the fight announcement. My lord, this thing died fast. And just like that, they they saw enough vision of them walking away for two seconds, and that's all that matters now. You know, they secure this Baron buff going straight into this dragon here that's going to spawn in six seconds and try and put themselves on soul point. One of these teams is getting soul point here, and I think it's probably going to be the blue team. And this red team can find a miracle engage here. Well, Teleport coming down for Doki, getting to the Dragon immediately. They're going to start this up. They don't see Viego yet. Viego did recall, but managed to make it back in time. We will see what happens here. Karthus Ooh. looks to start the fight by doing a lot of damage. Harvey already to half health once the burn finish is ticking. My lord, that's a painful Karthus. Yeah, but blue team's a little split up here. Zaya's all by herself on this boss side, but it doesn't look like they're going to find a way to capitalize on it. Yeah, red team not able to pull the trigger on the Zaya. Zaya gets a lot of damage down. The fight happens just outside of her range, and she's able to just continually throw auto attacks on the edge. Karthus looking for somebody to finish him off. He does get finished off, and he will, but it doesn't matter at this point. Red team has already lost the dragon. They have already lost the fight. At this point, it is just a formality where blue team looks to clean up both sides. Yeah, and this might just be game if they just group up here and run it down mid lane. The minion waves are pretty far off, so maybe they just get an inhibitor here. Orn is actually TP to try and push the wave faster. Looks like yeah. they're content with just catching waves here, but you saw the difficulty with the red team when they were trying to execute some sort of pincer with Aurelia off to the side. She was never able to actually get into the fight because of how quickly blue team collapsed on the floor. Yeah, you know, getting into these fights is very difficult for Aurelia. You know, you need to have the go button, you need to have your Diana nearby, and when those two champions aren't together, it's just hard for Aurelia to find an angle to go in and get her damage off without eating a lot of crowd control or without having, you know, the targets that she wants to be hitting completely avoiding her. And I mean, Karthus, by default, is just going to be running into your team, but 
Is killing him the thing you want to do when he's likely going to get his damage off anyway? And, you know, we can see, speaking of Karthus damage, he did adjust and didn't go for that Void Staff fourth like I thought. He actually went for the uh, Demonic um, Helm thingy Mabobber. Uh, um, yes, Demonic Helm thingy Mabobber. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it, was in the, it was in the patch notes. They changed the name. You just, you, you went uh, out. Yes. Well, I guess we will have to embrace the new name as the Demonic Helm thingy Mabobber is going to be giving him more ability oh. power based on himself. And you see that he almost just deletes Aphelios. <laughs> The fight continues and Doki drops to the Orn. Orn whiffs his ultimate and doesn't continue it. Oh, and they've managed to burn the Guardian Angel of the Viego. A big stun coming up. We'll see if they can make anything of it. Aurelia jumps back in, eats the CC, and dies before she can get the second dash. Harvey looking to get away with his life as three members of the blue team are dead on the floor and Aphelios is bleeding in the corner. Man, that, you could just see how hard it is for this Aphelios. He even rushed Bloodthirster to try and have more health to survive this burst combo. But, you know, Viego just kind of looked at him and Karthus dropped the ult and he had to run for his life. And Zillian with the ult, ult not very just, tanky. Yeah. They're, they're all dead and that's gonna end up being a game. That will conclude our game. Ending the game with an 11 and a half thousand gold lead. A very good display from the blue team and still a respectable one from the red team. Yeah, uh, the when the Orin doesn't die in his 8-0 and 22, you know the game didn't quite go according to plan. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit of a strange pick in the mid lane, and it seemed to throw a large wrench into the plans of the blue team. Very well played by uh, the red team mid laner. Uh, I think we're going to throw it to a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have our third and final game of the night.
get my dues. Respect, I'm the next tycoon. Got a path full of greens, couple M's, my soon. I believe I do you see the confidence. Got some people waiting for me on the fence. Had a favor, never see me on the fence. But to leave it when I win, it's coming soon. And we are back with our final draft of the night. Joining me for this final game is Void Bullet Angel, as Ducky has had to step away for this final game. And, uh, you know, hopefully we get a good game three. Both teams here, 2-0. and We'll see uh, who gets to hold that 3-0 crown at the end of exhibitions. Yeah, and we also got an exciting lineup kind of across the board here. Defoe, Sniper, Night Train, Napkin, Neos. Epic Tomato, Buy Scapegoat, Frozen Forever, Sunray, and I think um, I think it's Oxford is, I think he's our sub top laner, but either way, this is going to be a great game. Yeah, we will see as we get a Hecarim and a Zac Ban here coming out right out of the gate. As, uh, taking some junglers out, but now we have uh, Darius Ban coming out here, you know, can always be an annoying top laner to play against if uh, you don't really like playing those uh, bruiser matchups into it so yeah i think you're just getting full target vans kind of across the board if i remember correctly night train's been spamming a lot of hecarim and solo queue kind of running the phase rush uh full damage hecarim build the lethality one that uh dantes has kind of popularized and then the the darius ban is obviously a napkin one uh ban. <laughs> Yeah, one, one important thing to note it is not actually Sunrai playing. He was the sub for their game one, but Witch is now back, and Witch is actually sub coming back into the jungle. Okay. So. All right, that changes things. We got Witch back in the jungle. Okay. So they got their, their Chad jungler. All right. Yeah. Their Earth was definitely a Defoe ban. <laughs> Thank you, Ducky. It was definitely our pro programmer. Just it, There was just another bug in the, the Riot code. That, that must have been it. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, we'll see what they decide to first pick here. As uh, time is running down, and it's just going to be the Thresh locked in. Kind of an interesting first pick. Something that's relatively easy to counter right now. I'm not. I'm kind of. Eh, I guess if they know kind of what they want to do straight off the bat and not show a ton, I still feel like you could probably first pick a different kind of player, but. Confidence. We love the confidence. Hey, you know, it's uh, you got you got to first pick something and blue team has decided that uh, Thresh is their go to is we're going to get a blind pick vein locked in here. Yeah, my sniper thrown down right there. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> I'm this could get hyped. spicy real quick. I I'm so hype. I love vein. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Yeah. You know, I think uh, Vayne players are typically excited when they lock in their champion until lane starts, and they're not too excited Bola anymore. Bear. Hmm, interesting. Okay. They're going to definitely flip this at some point, right? Are they going to... They could definitely flex at the top, although I don't know if they're actually going to do that or not. Yeah, their red team is actually so confident they're picking in order. That's blind pick Vayne top. <laughs> they trust. They trust. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> don't even care <laughs> okay what okay all right well back to the draft um <laughs> the the maokai definitely once again the power pick of the draft as you were saying earlier in the cast i've played against it it's absolutely disgusting oh wow okay they're just gonna go for a full neutralized bot side with super safe plays wow there we go I like that. I like their team comp a lot. They're showing basically that they're going to put a lot of carry potential into mid and top. And we haven't seen a lot of bans towards Frozen. The Swain would definitely be really, really good here if you could actually just add to the slows and CC. They could just make a nightmare for this Vayne to play against with that much AoE damage flying around, just not too much to avoid. Counterpoint. Ooh. If you lock in Swain, you're never killing that Cassante. The, yeah, <laughs> you will never. And I played the Ash 
into Cassante, up two items, and it still took me about 30 seconds to kill that champion. Mm -hmm. And I had to burn both my sums. Yeah. And that was nerfed. This was this patch. It was yesterday. So Cassante that was cool. did he did get a pretty pretty sizable nerf, but only to his damage on his I think it's his W, where he puts up his shield and like channels. Yeah. It. It's the, but the like damage. The push. The big da damage nerf on it comes from the instant cast version, not the charged up version. So, still quite threatening to uh, these eighty carries, and uh, quite unkillable as well. Yeah, I mean, you do have your pick of the litter for the counter for it, and they're banning. You know, they're opting into bans towards mid because I think mean, they're definitely just trying to get frozen off of one of his hyper carries. They still, yeah, they, they're not gonna. There's no way they pick Swain into the. I guess like Cassante would be the last one standing in every fight, but I. I, I agree with you. I don't think they're ever going to pick the Swain here. So I'm kind of curious what they're going to move Frozen into because mostly he's been playing the Anivia, the Swain, and the Victor. So he did play Syndra, but I don't. I feel like you're you're a mid laner here. So I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. She can't kill Cassante either. It's going to definitely be difficult for Syndra and even items to be able to kill Cassante. Maybe you get you get a better you know chance once you get that execute on your alt, but. Now Tarek coming in even more in mm. vulnerability, coming in. That's a this might doesn't quite look like a the best center angle, but it could be something in the term in the realm of like a a Ziggs, kind of get that zone control going and kind of deny everyone else coming in on the with the Cassante and just hoping that you're able to take out the Cassante while zoning out the rest of the team. But oh they my are going to go for the Swain. He did it. He did it. Um, I hopefully they have some type of percentage max health damage topside, <laughs> or they're not gonna kill this Cassante, and Ash is gonna struggle to kill this guy. Yeah, because like I just, you, I think the biggest issue with picking like a super damage oriented, which oh, okay. top lane, which they might not even do into this Scion, they are really lacking in yeah, strong they, damage. Which really needs to camp bot. Like this Ash needs to be three yeah. items up, because it, this is gonna be a struggle if they get behind and. I mean, well, okay. Yeah, I mean, they especially have... with the invulnerability landing on the vein, even if she plays back and waits for that invulnerability to land, that still gives her, you know, three seconds to come in completely unhindered. And we know three seconds is enough for Vayne to kill Sion. <laughs> the boy so... is throwing down the gauntlet with the brand, too. But you just have so much CC coming in from blue side here. Like, you look at this I'm... team comp, there's AoE everywhere, tanks everywhere. Vayne can't deal with this many damage yeah. dealers. I'm now, a little down on the brand. I would have liked to see something with some more range. It can deal a lot of damage, but I feel like it's going to struggle in this mid lane matchup. Playing against Swain, you really want to play against someone who can threaten him outside of his pull range, outside of that that claw. And Brand's not really able to do that, so we'll have to see if he's able to sidestep those to get damage off. But with how much CC there is, Brand is very susceptible to that CC as well. Um, but then again, if he does have a couple frames where he's not CC'd, once he gets a couple items, he can start dealing a lot of damage just by throwing his alt and E out, not even having to hit a skill shot before he dies. So Yeah, I, I'm not, I don't think I've ever played this matchup in mid lane, but Swain, doesn't he have like a pretty nice range with the E onto Bran for the backline catch to get like a really nice combo off? Yes, Bran to, for Bran to land his pillar, he's going to have to step inside of Swain's range. Um, I believe you basically trade max range on the pole versus the brand stun. Um, but to actually land the pillar, which is your big source of um, burst damage, um, early levels, and it's what you max first, he's going to have to walk into threat range, which I guess a Swain Maokai could leave him very vulnerable early on to these ganks. Gotcha. Because I know the bot lane matchup for blue side is definitely favored as they're... Their uh, matchup just has more range, more tools to deal with the Vayne Taric. And if they go Glacial Augment on Thresh, which would, I mean, to be fair, recommend that, they actually can make Taric really, really useless in terms of getting stuns without his flash. Because he's just going to get flayed off and slowed, and then he actually just can't line up the stun correctly unless he has flash to just guarantee it. And the range from Ash, completely outranging both Taric and and Vayne, just makes this really tough. Double range into short range ADC and a a melee, uh, a melee Taric that really has to rely on getting on top of somebody to hit them to continue getting the stacks of these Q. So, 
I'm I'm not really sure where they have an advantage here. Kind of maybe in early jungle while Volibear kind of is running around the map, like what one through seven, just kind of running rampant until the the Maokai AP damage kind of comes online and can kind of halt the Volibear. This game I feel like is going to kind of come down to how well N Night Train kind of navigates the map in the first like five minutes. If he can get somebody ahead, preferably if he can get Sniper ahead on the vein. And maybe he can get to his items pretty quick so he can like not have to worry about dealing with you know three champions that are going to be able to kill him or cc him in some way i also would really like to see him go ghost assuming that frozen is going to build rylai's he's going to need that extra moose seed to, to dodge around and actually move around the fight all right well yeah i think it's a pretty kind of pretty straightforward early game for blue team it's just a worry of as you scale later on do you actually have the damage to cut through the front line of red team is red team's always going to have the damage between vein and the uh, max health damage from brand to cut through blue team um so it'll just depend on kind of how blue team engages here and if once you start scaling later on how fed and how safe that ash can play with basically four giant meatballs in front of her yeah, if she can get the lead, she just can basically control the the, the momentum of every single fight. Because everybody has to walk through her front line to get to him. And now that I think about it, if they probably just toss the Scion and pick Orin, I think they just have three winning lanes to play through. Because Orin can beat up on Cassante unless I'm wrong on that one. Because Scion, I don't think, has much a better matchup into Cassante. He relies too much on the shield and the wave clear with Q, where Cassante can just stack up his Q and always yeah. interrupt him, or just go invulnerable and push him off. So, Scion did get a pretty pretty sizable buff this patch. Ooh, um, got, really? I didn't actually see that. Like, what was his buff? And twenty flat damage on his Q. Um, Ooh, so it's it's pretty big. Okay. But like you said, it's hard for him to charge that up if the Cassante has stacks going. Um, but just that that. Flat HP does a lot in terms of his trading power, letting him stay melee trading grass procs a lot. So we'll have to see how that lane plays out. Um, but I think we're going to throw it to a quick break here and when we come back, we'll see uh, the start of our final game. Welcome back, everyone, from that quick break as we get into our third game of the night. It's a little bit less action uh, or level one than our other two games where we saw almost first blood and first blood in those games by now. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, definitely... I think this is going to be a bit of a slower game. It kind of is going to depend on how Night Train wants to play it. He definitely needs to push the tempo early if he really wants his um, team to take the lead and push away. And pull... I think we were playing at half speed right now. It's... Yeah, it kind of looks, uh, looks like slow motion a... right now. Seems a little slow-mo here. Um... <laughs> so we get back to uh, regular speed here. It might, might be a, quite a long game if we play it at uh, half speed the whole time. Well, we could just talk <laughs> in slow motion. <laughs> really slow. The and they could, you could just run a straight back at two times. To move. No, okay. No, I'm just, just going to stop there. I'm just, I'm just going to stop there. <laughs> But we're not seeing too many things surprising. They're just kind of holding up, making sure that nothing is going crazy. But we're getting Witch starting on blue, which means he's going to look for that early gank. Looks like Night Train also is going to start on this side. So looks like we're getting an early action in bot side. Maokai shows up. They have some pretty strong burst damage with the Maokai and the, the Taric if he's able to line the stun up with the stun from Volibear. So we'll see how this works out. But we definitely want to watch the jungler's path here. Yeah, you know, once again, it is not. It doesn't look like it's going to be the AP Malkai that's terrorizing solo queue. He's, he's going after Shock, so just like in our game one, probably a more traditional tank Malkai build coming out here. There's a bit of early trading here up in the top lane. You see the uh, those plus twenty damage buffs come in hot. Yep, right there. We just saw with Neos Flare what he's going to be staring at the entire <laughs> game. He's going to be just stand in queue, and they're both just going to turn and walk away from him and ignore him. Okay. Yeah, that does look... Yeah, that, that that's a big slap. I'm curious if, if he's... I'm curious if he's actually going to be able to continue to hit those queues once Cassante has all his levels, but I guess uh, the early the early lane trades with Grasp are going to be pretty nice. Yeah. you know, it's a, I don't have a whole lot of experience playing against Cassante, so I'm not... Not still not entirely sure even what this champion does, but we will try our best here as uh, still more of a trade. But Cassante uses abilities and immediately tries to run away to avoid that slamming. Yeah, he basically feels like a tank with consistent damage, with consistent poke like that. Where if he lands the Q, he could just kind of take you all in, and he can do a ton of damage reduction like that. Where he could just kind of stand in front, continually break the shield. Ooh, as the hook just barely misses oh, out, but he lands the flay anyway into the glacial augment. Vayne has the flash away, but the flash follow from the ash as well. The slows are landing, but they aren't quite able to get back in range of the Vayne as she's able to kite it back out, and now Neos is in a bit of trouble. He's trying to kite it back, but it is going to go down, and Nitrain's just a little bit too late. Is trying to fight them off, but it's not going to be able to keep up this 1v3. It's a little, oh, a little bit of anti-synergy there. Fresh goes wide. But, Night Train flashes over, but the damage, the follow through from Witch, and he's able to secure the kill. And already two kills going over the side of Blue Team in a 1,000 gold lead, three and a half minutes in. Yeah, that that went about as bad as it could have been. Witch making the correct choice there by just, uh, he just left the red and just went straight down. Or I didn't exactly see what he was doing because they were fighting, but he walked down immediately and just took that trade with them. That gives the Ash even more priority in this lane than she already had. And then you lose the flash on her. Now, if she ever gets flayed, it's just game over. She just loses all all potential to actually like walk into the lane. She's going to lose too much HP. Like Frozen here. Oh, they're Ooh. actually trading flashes here in mid lane. But Night Train walked away right as that flash happened. Now, Defoe's going to take a turret oh, shot. It just, just go down. Not quite Oh no, Defoe. maximizing that turret range. Oh, just a little bit unfortunate. I don't think he had the damage to kill there, but maybe he gets out if he doesn't take that turret shot. But... Yeah, he, he was doing a little bit of greed. Just a to... little bit of greed there on the flash. And I don't yeah, just... believe that he really needed to flash there. If he just holds it and burns the... Well, I guess he he did have both stacks onto the, the Swain, so he was just kind of going for the kill. Yeah, he was going for the kill, not quite able to find it. Reunites himself with that turret once again, just to make sure it's still there. But, you know, Night Train originally passed towards that turret. Oh, so he might get pulled straight under the turret, but is able to avoid the turret shots and walk away. But Night Train looked for the gank, turned around for half a second to go towards Scuttle. And right as he turned around, that's when Swain flashed towards the turret. Ooh, but as we say that, we get the engage lantern coming in, and now Witch is going for the kill onto Vayne as the hook does land. The Vayne should have no way of getting out here. Is another kill handed over to Ash. And 
this lane's just uh, gonna keep going worse like this yep. if they're not able to fully reset these waves and play it on their side of the map. Yeah, this is exactly what I was fearing for the Vayne Taric. They just don't really have any opportunity to, to play this lane out. They just, they don't have really any good opportunities to make anything really happen. They have to severely outplay their opponents or just wait for them to make a horrendous mistake to get in range and make, you know, let the Taric get a stun off that Vayne can, you know, possibly follow up with the uh, Condemn. There's just not a ton that they can do and they really need to get bailed out here by night train so hopefully he passed down here he's in the bot side now doing his wolf so we'll see if they actually maybe make the play on the drake because they have pushed mid they've already got the reset so if they shove bot well i don't even know if they can really shove that hard unfortunately because it's they only have they just don't have enough wave clear between the vein and the Taric. it looks like their wave under the tower is just going to kind of hinder all of that their yeah, entire plan that I was just thinking they could do. I think if blue team wants to have wave control and shuffle the wave, I think they can do that on contested at this point. Two two range champions versus Vayne, who really has nothing to offer in terms of wave clear. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a rough time. Yeah, and in, uh, scapegoat doing exactly what I would have done here, rushing the boots first, just getting that extra move speed to dodge out on everything. So doing a great oh we're oh, gonna we commit the alt here from Cassante trying to follow up the engage both flashes traded in the knockback pulling him back in and that's gonna be a solo kill going over to this Cassante now trying to run away from the Sion but not able Sion. to <laughs> and he trades it back one for one with the zombie form it's now Defoe gets engaged on his frozen pulls out the alt trying to slow him down here one more Q should be enough it's gonna ground. come up here and finish off the kill but we have another 3v3 here oh, in the bot lane, but they see Night Train early on, but they still look for it. Anyways, the 3v3 will finally break out, looking to go straight onto this Maokai, trading damage onto Neos, who has to flash away, but the hook Good follows stun. and lands on him anyway. Witch now running for his life, but the Triumph Hero is just going to be enough. And yeah. now the Sniper's in a bit of trouble here. He's being permanently slowed by the ass, trying to go for the turnaround, but the heal from the Maokai is just enough. Oh. And then the Triumph comes in as well, and a triple kill coming out for Ash. Yeah, and uh, things are going real poorly here for Red Team. Yeah, the it, it was an attempt to kind of bring the game back in. So I, you know, I appreciate their their attempt to try and make that happen. But once the once Night Train got spotted out, it was there's no way they can make that play happen. They just can't. They don't have the damage right now. Sniper literally spent the entire time hitting Witch and did almost no damage to him. It took him the entire time to just get him into into kill threat range and then him to go back in and kill him. So it's a really, really unfortunate fight for them, but they just kind of falling further and further behind here. So they're going to have to find some type of way back into this game. Yeah, and we say that Sion's getting engaged on here. He gets his ult stopped by Night Train, and now he's just going to go down. We'll see if he is able to trade back a kill, but Volibear should be able to walk this one out. It's just going to be a couple CS picked up by the Scion. It's a good gank by Night Train. You know, trying to get himself back in this game, get level six. Yeah, he, he just he needs to get six and maybe see if he can fight for something. It's but this is definitely dangerous not here. The rest is here first, and it's going to force the flash away. Which is following up with the flash, but the blast cones should be enough. But now Defoe's in a bit of trouble here. As he gets pulled back, the hook just goes Ooh, wide. Just misses. But Witch is able to get onto him, and that's going to be a knockback. No, he does have flash, but not going to use it. And that's going to be another kill going over to Frozen, who appears to be going a tank build on this Swain. Uh, yeah, so, he's, uh, is he doing the Radiant Virtue Swain build? It, I do not, not know mistaken, what builds into that. It, it builds out of that. Okay. Uh, the that shield item it. that looks like Bulwark and always reminds me of Runic Bulwark. I always forget the name of that, that item, but it looks like Runic Bulwark to me, so I'm just going to call it Bulwark. <laughs> but it builds out of that, so... It's either I've that not, or doesn't... Um, I haven't played Swain... Jock Shows uh, since build Swain. that too? I haven't played Swain since Swain Taric days, so I'm not really <laughs> sure what the build for Swain is now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but, you know... We talked about them having low damage, and then the Swain is going this more tanky build, but the Ash is just so far ahead at this yeah. point. Ash is where... soaring, so they, they really no. won't have the, the lack of damage that we were concerned with in draft just because of how fed the Ash is and how weak the Vayne is. Vayne is never going to kill any of these frontliners. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, and now Sion's in a bit of trouble once again. No ult to get himself out of this situation. 
because he just has two beefy boys smacking onto him. He can't really do anything about it. Which is coming. Very slowly die. Which shows up, and maybe they can trade it back with the zombie form, as it looks like they might be able to. Nice trade still has alt, and he's not going to commit it, and it's actually going to go oh, down we to got the him. slash from Frozen. We'll see if Nap is able to trade this one back. Looks like. He might be able to just walk away from this, but is gonna be committed to this fight, trying to get onto Witch to take him out. Commits the Aldus, it finally comes back up. And now they're gonna start trading back and forth, but Frozen is taking no damage here. Let's see if he has the damage to finish him off, and he is going to. And now the Swain has five kills as well. Yeah, this is just turning from bad to worse for for the red team. They're, they're trying to make ha things happen, but they're just too far behind at this point. 5k down at 11 minutes, you're just taking every single fight you're taking across the map is just losing. Even Defoe's getting jumped on here. Uh, looks like he should be able to walk this one out as he sells Flash and Scion doesn't, but is the Scion committing uh, some uh, pressure here into mid lane, and Defoe's got to be a bit careful of uh, harassing the Scion, but... Everyone will walk away from here as we get the first Mythics coming in here. And actually, this Maokai is going the AP build with the Demonic Embrace first item, um, which is the typical first item into Leandry. So we'll see if he Looking commits up it. to that. But now the Ash Arrow is coming in, lands on the Tarek. The Flay comes in, the hook land goes just wide. And now the Tarek all comes down, trying to buy some time as both junglers show up. But it doesn't look like Red Team's going to have enough damage. Switching aggro? With them being lit up here as Night Train tries to find the damage onto Ash, but it's not going to be enough all by himself. Oh, roaming. No, he walked Defoe away. Oh, has to turn around as he can't walk into that 1v3. And yeah. yeah, you can just see the damage here on Red Team. They weren't even able to cut through this Ash before uh, they had to run away. Yeah, and, and what we're watching right here is what I, exactly what I expected the Cassante Scion matchup to be, where he just kind of beats on him senselessly and Scion can't do anything about it because 2022 tank. So, <laughs> like, he almost killed him. He's just gonna stand there just beating on him, taking negative damage from Scion. But, like, Cassante can't, he can't deal with the rest, like, with the Swain and the Ash at the same time. He just doesn't have the beef that he needs, you know, to, to actually sustain this kind of fight. And, yep. Demonic Embrace coming on Swain. Okay, so I was wrong. Hey, but, uh... <laughs> I'm not sure. uh, I'm no Swain expert, but yeah. I don't think that's the buy, but you know what? I've doubted yeah. Frozen a hundred times. I'm not going to doubt him anymore. He's like, I can't oh. say that Ash Arrow coming from downtown. Defoe stunned for three years, is finally able to flash away. He doesn't even get the ult bounce on his ult. As now Frozen is in a little bit of no man's land, but he is so no tanky. <laughs> He's just going to turn it back around as his Ash shows up and... Night Train has to run for his life. What an absolutely great Ash ult. As, a, as an ADC main myself, I can very much appreciate the, the cross map arrows. <laughs> and Defoe just standing there helplessly for three and a half seconds. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It was yeah. Great. And now with Blue Team just taking this gold lead, they're going to get Dragon. They're having full control. They should be able to just rotate into mid lane and take this mid lane turret pretty quickly. And Brand's wave clear isn't is it the safest? He has decent wave clear if he can walk up, but with the fed ash and a thresh, that could be rather difficult for him to get access to the wave. Yeah. Uh, so he... we'll see. Yeah. They they can basically just threaten fights at any point in time because Ash Arrow cooldown is so low that they can just start fights whenever. And along with the the Cyan old Maokai R, like you just have so many ways to start fights, they really should never lose an objective again now. All right, Red Team is looking for something, but it's kind of hard to dive at this Scion, who still has his ult up. And now Defoe's going to get landed on, gets the Ash Arrow, flash, no flash twisted advance. Him. He's going to go down. Is uh, That's just uh, another unfortunate event of uh, Brand Mid being picked on with the the no mobility. Still hasn't even been able to complete his Mythic yet. And yeah. It's hard to, find, to see a pathway for Red Team to get back into this game. Yeah, and we're approaching the 15 minute mark and they're 6,000 gold behind. It's just a really tough way to actually find a way back into this game. The Thresh is higher level than Vayne. <laughs> oh, no, no. The Thresh has more gold has than Vayne. more money than Vayne. Oh, no. The Thresh has more money than Brand as well. This is, uh, that's not what you want to see when only two people on your team have more money than the support Thresh. It's but, definitely, uh, that uh... is the world that we are living in currently.
Yeah, this uh, th this one's a, a bit of a tragedy, but um, I, I can see like they're they're still trying to make plays and trying to make something happen. Just find positive plays somewhere because it it is always hard, but you know it's always possible. It's always somebody that you know makes the mistake. I've been one of those guys that's thrown a 10k gold lead. Actually looked at my maximum gold lead that I tossed, and I think it was 14.4k. So. Every game is winnable. Yeah, I don't think that was you. That was someone else. Uh, you would never throw that game. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I'll claim that, but uh, <laughs> let's be honest here. I've definitely thrown that before. Ugh. But it's going to be a tough one here, and the only members that have kill participation on red team are in the top side. And as the, the great Sigma once said, top lane does not matter. So it doesn't really <laughs> matter what he does. Oh. And Ash Arrow comes actually from downtown and lands onto the Cassante as we got a bunch of tanks landing on them, but Ash is now here, but up. as the vulnerability shows up, as Gazante pops the ult to try and start dealing some damage, but they just have to kind of run away, maybe trading back on this Thresh, but no, the stopwatch is enough. Now Vayne Sniper. flashes forward onto the Ash, but it just doesn't deal any damage. <laughs> he does no damage. I think he oh, autoed no. the Ash maybe twice there and did 200 damage. Is uh... Oh, as Frozen flashes forward to get the redirect, but now he's out of mana. Defoe should just be able to walk this one away. So, you know, Frozen trying to make that play, but without any mana, it's kind of hard to auto attack the brand of death. Yeah, that was definitely, definitely uh, Sniper's trying to make the play with the Condemn, and I think he got it off. He just died <laughs> to four auto attacks from the Ash. That's how, how far ahead she is. Not only in items, but two levels up as well. Probably about to be three here in a wave and a half. This is it's just going from bad to worse. We could have a game. Yeah, they they've eclipsed the 10k mark now uh, pre 20 minutes. So yeah. it, uh, it's a little bit of a, a tragedy of a game. I think a lot pretty much everything that red team did just was a little off of a timer. If Volibear shows up to that level three fight a little bit sooner, I think they could probably turn it, maybe completely flip the game around in terms of bot lane standards. So Vayne and Tarek actually have a little bit of footing from the jungler. There's an opportunity to make plays. It's just really, really hard against the, the Glacial Augment Thrash. The Glacial Augment Thrash is just unbelievably good. And every time I play with a really good Thrash, it's like impossible to make plays happen. Slows, hooks, his R, just everything that he does is just a pain. Ooh, and he can't Which even get his own blue buff. You're losing his own blue. They're just getting all the setup that they want. They can pretty much do whatever they want right now for just setting up for this dragon. Even the even Scion really doesn't doesn't really care what red team does because it takes them too long to kill him. He's just gonna do his good job here and just kind of stand there and tank damage. But he's not gonna die very quick, and Vayne can't kill him that fast either. So yeah, and then I mean, you also have Frozen here too with all of his damage as well. <laughs> Yeah, with, with how late game scaling oriented the carries are for red team, them falling this far behind early, it just kind of stops Brand or Vayne from ever getting a chance to get some items and get online. So, I mean, this Vayne hasn't completed her first item yet, and Ash already has two. Swain already has two. Uh, Maokai's almost on his second. Yeah, Sion's halfway to his second. Uh, it's it's going to be a long game if red team's going to be able to come back into this one. Yeah, and I mean, it blues. Blue team would have to make a severe <laughs> mistake because they just are basically throwing their wallets at red team right now and just beating them up with their wallets. I mean, when your support thresh has more money than the AD carry in the mid laner, you know it's going to be a struggle. Moby He's boost. looking forward and the arrow is going to land onto the vein. Uh, chain CC to death. Although that chain CC didn't need to last all that long, but, you know, it's uh, a bit unfortunate. You saw just this ash arrow, I mean... Uh, Goat has just been so good with these Ash Arrows, just finding the isolated member, always hitting these arrows. I haven't seen one miss yet. You know, maybe uh, no, I haven't production seen just yet. Save, the spectator's just saving him and not showing anything that misses, but he's hit all of them I've seen so far. And that's uh, that's what you want to see out of your Ash, at the very least, is just actually hitting alts. But with how fed he is, he just hits the ult and walks up and drops two auto attacks and the person's dead. Yeah, I've been watching his footing to kind of see how he kites. Because uh, like if, if you really want to know how good an Ash player is, really just kind of see how they kite out with their slows. And 
He's been doing relatively well with uh, spacing really well against the vein, always keeping a distance away so he can at least get one auto off before Sniper can get in range to get his first. Right, well, here's the Red Team's the chance. Battle. Can Night Train steal this Baron? But they're not even going to give him the chance. The Terracult does land to buy him some time, but Blue Team just completely stopped hitting Baron to not even flip it. But now Ash is a Left Ash little Ash. isolated there as Sniper's trying to land some damage. As we saw Defoe actually deal a decent amount of damage. But uh, not going to be enough. And now let's go. Escape? Oh, he almost oh. died to that. Okay. Almost dies. He commits the heal to stay alive. And now that's Baron down and a 12k gold lead. You know, Frozen might just take this 1v3, but decides against it. He, he might need one more item to kill everybody. But right now they just they should just group up as five and just walk it down mid. There's really nothing that red team can do to stop them. They, You know, the 11k gold lead, it's only going to balloon here more with the Baron... The XP lead is just growing. It, it's just kind of... It, the game's just kind of out of control at this point. I, I'm I, I'm struggling to find a spot where red team can kind of find a way back into this one. Honestly, if uh, blue team can't end off this Baron, I think it's a moral victory for red team. <laughs> I think that's where we're at in this game. If you How... can survive this Baron buff and not lose, I think you deserve to win the game. As uh, oh, they do Sion find a pick died. onto Sion, but now the team is here. And uh, once Ash shows up, this Cassante is not going to live for very long. He's trying to run for his life as the Ash Alt Another lands Ash onto Foley Bear, but no one's there to follow up, and the Foley Bear chose to flash instead of pop the all. But uh, either way, is able to get over the wall. But uh, they take that. They get a kill. No one else dies. They're just going to lose uh, their mid lane tier two and bot lane tier two for it. So. Probably as good as to be expected from Red Team, given the situation. Yeah, the, honestly, pulling them away from mid tower honestly worked out pretty well there. Oh, she ate that. She actually, she's going to get rooted still. As a witch goes in, trying to just take this solo kill. As a, he finally gets some help from Swain to finish it off. But now tanking a lot of tower shots. He's not that tanky at the moment. And he's going to go down. Because now Ash gets stunned up and jumped on. He has to flash away to safety, but it's not going to be enough. With their big damage dealer down, let's see if they can get can they through kill this Swain, but it doesn't look the like Swain they can. Is so strong. He's just beating through all of them, but he's finally going to go down to this Cassante damage. And blue team overplayed their hand there, and I think red team's going to live through this Baron now. Team is going to live through the Baron, so I think you are right, Unicorn. They, uh, the moral <laughs> victory is there. <laughs> yeah, just call it a game. Red team wins. Blue team... You, they you got lose. some more Sorry money about back in their pocket. Uh, I mean, you're you're the brand expert here. When does he actually come <laughs> online to deal damage to, to any of these champions? Well, does he need like uh, three thousand more gold or four thousand more gold? Typically, you would you'd kind of in an even game, you'd probably say maybe two strong items. He starts being real threatening in this type of game, especially with these taking this uh, you know pit stop into this uh, this uh, oblivion orb. Um, he's a little delayed on its demonic embrace. Um, which is that Demonic Embrace, Leandri's Rylize is kind of like your core gear on brand. And uh, with how far, far behind he is, plus the delay in item build for that healing reduction, it's probably going to take a, a couple more shutdowns for him to get to that point. So I don't think Blue Team's really in any danger of getting snowballed on damage-wise here from this brand, but don't want to take too many more of those uh, unfavorable fights. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I think one fight, and they could probably just take two inhibitors. So they're just looking for that, that right fight to kind of take this to the next stop and just kind of take over the game. So I think Sion is on his way. He doesn't have teleport, but I honestly don't think they need it. With... Ash just needs time here. Oh, we have an early Terracult, and that's not quite what you want to see. Vayne doesn't even get it, so now she has to play very carefully. It's just in the gets middle. up and not even able to get into the fight, but they are able to take down the Ash, so that's one primary target down, but the rest of the team is just being destroyed by these beefy members. The Swain just dealing so much consistent damage when there's nothing there to threaten him, and now Cassante's just left in a 4v1 and is not going to be able to live from this. And blue team, they could go for <laughs> soul hit here. They might just run straight down this bot lane and try and get this inhibitor. But uh, they looks like they might just take this soul here and be happy because Ash died. It's hard for them to uh, take too many structures. Yeah, Ash getting caught there in the middle. The, the one thing that I think I, I may have said in Chan Select, or maybe if I missed it, but Ghost on Ash would have been really, really amazing here. Just to kite out the Vola Bear when he's charging and, and make sure that like Tarek can't really stick to him. But opted for the heal this game, would I'm pretty sure saved... Uh, 
Witch's life and his life at the Baron, so we can't really criticize it too much, but <laughs> Ghost is would have you know would be giving him a little bit more safety in this game but to be fair i don't think he really needed it he's got four meatballs standing in front of them that all have more than four thousand hp so i guess he doesn't exactly need ghosts they just kind of got lucky that he killed him so yeah. it is a little but unfortunate there that he got caught but not me really. out here you say that he'll save his life on baron but if he had ghosts he could have ran away from baron faster i that is correct so... we could have just flashed the wall <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he had flash. But I don't think he had <laughs> flash there. He should have taken hex flash. Is the real uh, thing. But he does complete his uh, wits end here. So some more MR to protect him from that brand and volley bear burst, as well as the night vow is completed on this thresh for even more protection. Plus yeah. the radiant virtue, which I think which has had for a while. I think that was his second item. But he does have a lot of passive protection besides just the meatballs in front of him. His team is, uh, you know, the, between the Radiant Virtue, the Nice Vow, that's going to negate a lot of damage um, as long as he doesn't just get one shot. So, yeah. we'll see. And I, Hopefully he avoids any initial stuns from Volley Bear or Tarek, and he should be filming. Yeah. They really just... I, I really wish Blue would just group his five and just push. They just have a better 5v5 team, and they're just giving Red Team opportunities to find, find them in the jungle and get picks. I get they're trying to get Baron, but it's not like Red Team has the greatest wave clear because they could just start a fight under Baron or under the tower, and Scion can probably take it for ten years. And looks or, like they uh, are... or Witch could tank at the same time. They've got so much beef. Look at their health bars. They probably have what? Scion's got like, oh, fight starting. All right, this we see we're trying to get this engage going onto this Malkai, but he's tanking up a lot of damage here. The tank all comes down, but the Scion all lands. First, forcing the vein out of the Terracol, and now Defoe finally gets his ult off, but it doesn't get transfer to the back line. And now everyone's just going down to this passive damage from this back line as Ash cleans up the people, the Cassante and Holy Bear, who made it to her. And that should just be game here. And we'll see how many structures Blue Team feels like taking before they end the game. Yeah, they can take the entire base here if they really <laughs> want to, but they could just push on one tower in the game, but. They're just taking the style points, increasing their gold lead by another thousand gold so that they can uh, kind of pad the stats here a little yeah. bit. But I mean, unfortunately just... for them, gold lead is not a stat that is tracked in preseason or in the uh, exhibition games. So unfortunately, not padding their stats too much here. But uh, well, they will either way this... get the lead or get the win here as they finally take down the Nexus. Has red team look for one final play here, but. Yeah, props Not to enough Blue in the tank. Team, making the game plan in, in executing it really well, which knew exactly what his win condition was and played it perfectly early, coming down immediately after the the three camp on top side, getting that early kill for the vein or the vein, the ash to kind of secure pretty much the rest of lane. Like once vein doesn't have flash, the the next fight was just perfect. Which had his bot camps up, came down bot again. They killed Ash again. They killed Tarek again, and then that was lane. They just there was no shot after that they were gonna really control any point in that in that lane. Unfortunately, Defoe got killed under tower and it just kind of all fell apart from there. So I think red red team or not red team blue team had a great game plan going in, and unfortunately red team just didn't have an answer to it. Yeah, I think the uh, the the blind picking the the vein was a, a bit ambitious, but hey, they're, they're two and zero, feeling themselves a bit, and um, unfortunately just got punished there by the smart pathing of the uh the maokai um but uh you know with that that's going to be uh our last game of the day um i am not sure so i've seen we might be moving the draft um the upcoming draft day it was originally going to be next friday but it sounds like we might be trying to get it in over the weekend and moving the league uh, start time up a week um so we will pay attention to upcoming announcements in the uh, Discord, and we will let everyone know. We will do our best if the draft is over the weekend to have a stream for the draft to let everyone be able to uh, see how that goes down. But if not, we will see you guys on Friday for either the draft or the start of the season, depending on how uh, conversations with the captains go for uh, when draft will be. But uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in and watching our season two exhibition games and we hope to see you next time thank you everybody have a good one